Welcome to the Gamozo bodybuilding stream. Today we're gonna be going into making some muscle. We're gonna be eating some protein, putting on some gains, and lifting some damn plates. Who's ready to do some lifting? Only guns all the time. Welcome to Gamozo's bodybuilding extreme paradise. Now with double the monster trucks. Bruh! <clears throat> I actually don't know how I did that voice. <laughs> I don't know how I did that voice. <laughs> Actual gamozo arms. Oh, fuck you, Nightshade, dude. Is this wine? Yes, this is. I actually have no idea what I'm drinking, but it definitely needs some more air. Today, we're gonna try some of this. Some broncho. Some broncho. It's, uh, it's a this. There's no, there's no, like, uh, history on it. <laughs> Randy Savage vibe. Protein wine. Yeah, do you not put protein powder in your wine? Uh... Creatine wine. Ugh. Ugh. It's just, it's gritty when it goes down. <laughs> that sounds fucking terrible. All right. Let's go and find my dashboard. My dashboard. My lady. All right. Let's see here. Bam. All right. Would you choose work or school? Work. 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 There's the there's a big there's a big reason for it. Here's 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 why I would choose work over school. Let me show let me show you. Let me show you the math. Let me let me show you how this works. Uh okay, okay. So uh you hypothetically have uh, you have a, you have a school, oh, you have school, right? So you have school here, and there's a dollar sign, and then you have work here, which is also a dollar sign. Now, the reason I choose work over school is because I actually omit something from this. School actually has a, a negative symbol in front of it. And, and this leads to the, the, the math of work equals abs school and more specifically abs is correct in this case because sometimes you can get dollars from grad school but in reality it's actually this so there's it's just it's just a superset it's just a superset that's the that's the reason there no, in in all in all reality, uh, I think that you learn a shit ton more during work compared to school. Uh, I mean, you know, it depends on your environment. It depends on your job. It depends on who you're working with. You know, if they're assholes, if you have a good boss, if you have a good team, all those sorts of things. Uh, but generally, school doesn't really teach you that much. Um, I studied for five years and worked three point five of those for the government. Uh, where did I learn more? Correct. My personal projects. <laughs> personal projects definitely trump work for me. Yeah, exactly. Do you know of any practical and useful uses of blockchain? Uh, yeah, destroying the earth. Um, school of hard knocks. Hell yeah. I just full ride to school and still regret the time lost. Honestly, if you're a social person or you enjoy, you know, hanging out with other people, hooking up, like, all those sorts of things. Like, obviously, school is a better path. 
if you don't go to school, you're probably going to struggle a lot more socially. Like, if you go directly into work, you're probably not going to have the social things you need. You're probably going to struggle a little bit more when it comes to, like, communicating your ideas and doing things that you don't necessarily want to do. Um, and you're probably never going to make friends outside of work. Uh, because the way that everyone makes friends, at least in the U.S., is you make friends in college, and then you meet people through that friend group, and then you never make a new friend in your life. M maybe, maybe you meet, like, a colleague or something that, that's chill, and then branch into their friend group that they got in college, uh, but that, yeah, mm -hmm. I make all of my friends at work, yeah, it's possible, it's just a slower process. Make friends online. Online people are scary. You never know who you're going to get. Uh, I guess it depends on the subject, too. For things like maths and physics, uni is good, but I assume we're talking CS. Yes, CS degrees are kind of a joke. I'm sure other things are more relevant, but CS degrees are kind of a joke. Um, if you want to do CS in college, I highly recommend that you do computer engineering so at least you learn a little bit about double-year hardware. And always intern. Intern, starting with, like, fucking year one. Go find an internship. Make sure you're always doing that shit. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Uh... <laughs> I'm 100% glad I went only because it introduced me to the security team. Hell yeah! That's another thing, is... See, you, it's... I guess maybe it's changing, but historically, if you wanted to get into security, you're pretty much learning entirely with peers. You're learning in like a club, you're learning in a like fucking RPI sec is a great example of where like you're not going to learn anything in class. You're going to learn it all from your colleagues who are all doing personal projects and then sharing the information they run or learn. I run my uni cybersec club. It makes it 100% worth. Absolutely. Yeah, that actually makes sense. Seeing my first buffer overflow kind of changed my life. Oh my god, yeah, I'm in the I'm in the same boat. Uh, I've told this story probably a couple times before. Um, but my dad had his like second marriage or some shit uh, that we stayed at a, a at a house on a vineyard, and um, when you're when you're like 12 or 13 years old or 11 or however fucking old I was, staying on a vineyard sucks, like. It sucks. It was miserable. We didn't have internet. We had like sketchy power. It it was pretty awful. It was just my brother and I who were kind of alone. We had nothing to do. So I had the idea of figuring out what a buffer overflow was. Of course, I at this point, I knew C relatively fluently and I knew like what a buffer overflow was but I had no idea what it meant. I had no idea why it was exploitable, why it was a problem, why people like, why there are CVEs about it and that sort of thing. So what I did is I opened up a text editor, I typed out a buffer overflow where I probably just stir copied arg into a, a fucking 32 byte stack buffer. And then I just stared at it. I just stared at it. I opened up object dump. I read through all of the assembly, try to figure out what that was like, Try to figure out like what exactly was going on that made it a buffer overflow. Keep in mind, this was like a seven day vacation that uh, I had nothing to do 16 hours a day. Um, that was fucking awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, yeah, that was a really foundational like memory I had. I can't remember if I knew assembly at that point or if I brought a manual or if I just pseudo code it coded it, but like, yeah, it was fucking amazing. Or you literally know nothing about security and manage to land on a contract that requires it, then you're forced to learn it. Oh, God. That actually sounds pretty fun. Um, yeah, someone in my Discord today was talking about how they had like a job interview or someone who reached out to them about a security job, and then they realized it was a programming job, and then it sounded like they just said it was a security job because that would help them with the hiring process, <laughs> which is kind of bullshit. Can you say the vacation changed your life? Absolutely. Bless your dad. Yep, there we go. Um, 
<laughs> so I just joined Microsoft. I think they gave me your job after firing you. <laughs> Look, man, I didn't do a lot of work there. Uh, <laughs> um, was it Vim? Absolutely, it was Vim. Yeah. I, I've been using Vim since I was like 10. Gary Kelly, thank you so much for the five dollars. Uh, long, long live the scam. I think is what it says. Yeah, long live the scam. Hell yeah. Boring vacations with parents. You know, I I have always enjoyed vacations with my friends' parents, but not really with my own parents. Sorry, mom. My mom does watch this stream now. Uh, I think she does it just to hear my voice because I don't call her as much as I should. Sorry, mom. Sorry, mom. I'm a piece of shit, I know. Uh, you also know that, so it's fine. Oh, uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the first two weeks, uh, the CTF team put on a small CTF for new people. That was literally all I did for those weeks. Absolutely. Do you remember, like, the challenges and stuff that you had? Hi, Kamozo's mom. Sorry, Kamozo's mom. How did he get exposed to coding so early? Um, uh, hi, Gamama. <laughs> So, um, I interestingly got code, got into coding through my brother. Uh, so I used to do a lot of 3D modeling. So like when I was like seven or eight, I was really into 3D modeling and I used like 3DS Max 7 straight off of LimeWire or probably not even LimeWire yet. Might've even been like the Morpheus days, maybe Kazaa let alone Frostwire. Uh, so I had 3DS Max 6 or 7, I can't remember. Um, maybe even older than that. And I just did, like, shitty 3D models. Let me see if I can find some of my shitty 3D models, because I'm sure I can. Uh, so I made a lot of shitty 3D models, and then one day, for some fucking reason, my brother, like, at school was taught about macros in, like, Word or Excel. So he showed me, like, making a form with, like, Excel. Like, I have no fucking idea why. Uh, it makes no sense. Um. So let's see here. Uh. I have no idea where I would have these. I think on an old website. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my brother, like, introduced me into, like, Visual Basic in, in Word macros, and that's literally what I did for, like, three years. That's how I learned how to program. Like, I did Visual Basic, and then, and then people fucking yelled at me and said that that was dumb. I used to make chess pieces in 3DS Max. Is that where you, like, draw the outline, and then you have it do the thing where it where, where you, like, lathe it. I forget the thing. I miss Visual Basic sometimes. What are you, a fucking masochist? All right, all right. So here's the old photo bucket. That you can't see. Now you can. Um. Yeah, so back in the day... Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, so... I had, I guess I had screenshots of cubing. Oh, ooh, a 11752 solved. Not bad, not bad. When was this? When did I achieve such great that February 2008? Uh, I had I had my fake company, Norbert Software. I played some Tibia. Oh shit. Oh, look at this. Look at this. This this was my beast. This was the beast of a rig. Oh, baby. Oh, two CD drives. Two, count them, two. Oh, God. <laughs> and yep, what was I running at the time? I was running some GNOME. This was GNOME 2, probably new, GNOME 2.20, GNOME 2.24. No, 2.22. Look at that fucking setup, chat. Oh, yeah. When was this? 2007. And then, 
Oh, is that Dev C++? Hey, I still have that mouse. That's what I still use. I had my watch. I had a Sharpie and a pen, and then my TI-84 Silver Edition. Yeah, that looks like Dev C++ on my, on my laptop. And all of this was set up on a dresser, because I, I didn't have a permanent room. So it was just set up on a dresser. Uh, okay, fuck off. Um, what is this? Oh my god, is this, uh, oh, people are gonna know what this is, I think. Uh, this is, this is, uh, the PHP shell, right? Right? Is this, no, this is, uh, this is a Tibia item maker, or this is a World of Warcraft item maker for World of Warcraft private servers. Okay, 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 damn. I thought we'd have some hacking stuff in here. No, this is making an item for TBC private servers. Um, one of, one of the standard uh, avatars that I guess I used at one point. C++ programmer. <laughs> oh, man. Some jump quests. Oh, God. I was doing some nmap scans. Oh, I was hacking. I was hacking! 2007 was the build on that. When was the date of this photo? Yeah, I probably did some Nmap scans. I don't know what this was. Uh... <laughs> this is 2007. Ah! Ah, I see what's going on here. <laughs> Ah, yes, the mobs coincidentally were hanging out there. Ah, yes. Yes, I hate when that happens. Ah. Level 16. Getting a llama step. This would have been on real Maple Story. Uh made some lock picks. I was, a, I was crafty. Here's an Allen wrench that I ground down into a tension wrench. Uh, and then a bunch of things made out of random blades or like fucking things I had in the garage. Uh, you can tell I was big into raking and my I really like diamond picks, apparently. These are like some of the first picks I guess I made. I remember making these in elementary school. This thing was a masterpiece. This one was made out of a, well, these are all made out of uh, jigsaw blades, but this one was like really thin and fucking lasted forever. Oh my God, look at, look at some of these masterpieces. <laughs> what is this? Oh my God. Is this literally a screenshot of the first C++ program I ever wrote? It probably literally is. This is probably the first C++ program I ever wrote. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> it's like his first dollar bill. Project one. Yeah, I have a, I have a name. First Proggy. First Proggy. Sell it as an NFT. Do you still do C++? No, I stopped doing C++ after about a month when I realized C is just better in every way. Dude, that is probably literally the very first C++ I ever wrote. 2000, 2007. Like, it's probably safe to say this was the first C++ I wrote. Although I did have... I did have a 3DS Max made avatar that was uh, animated with C++ coming into form, so I might have been a poser, or this wasn't actually the first program. So what the fuck would this have been? 2007? Ninth grade? No, eighth grade. Eighth grade would have been 2007. This would have been the, the spring of eighth grade. Oh. Some more, uh, some more Maple Story. That was probably my first Maple Story character. Uh, doing tibia mapping. I did that way back when. Uh, I guess I was uh, passing through a tibia server at the time. It 
never really ends, does it, Jack? It never really ends. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, unfortunately, that's too blurry to see. Shit. Shit. Oh, God. Oh, no. Where are the photos of chicks when you were slaying C++ code? I was, uh... I was a, a flirty chap when I was, uh, when I was in my middle school era. Honestly, not much changed. I thought I had more 3D modeling shit here. Oh, look at this banger. Oh, oh, look at this. Sending virus, remote access, okay. Oh my God, it's so cringe. Here's a, here's a birthday cake I had that was our Rubik's Cube. Uh, this is fucking awesome. Uh, what were these? What was I doing here? Let me, let me, let me see if these chat messages are, are safe. Uh. Um. Yeah, this would have been some gnome shit. What's crazy is like all these people went on to be pretty, pretty lead. Yeah. So this was, okay. So this was December, 2008. So this would have been, this would have been freshman year of the spring. And this is when I had no friends. So I was working on, is that, is that some shell code chat? Do I have under start in here? Is that some x86 right there? Ah. Uh. <laughs> there we go. This is probably some of the earliest assembly I wrote. You can tell I was using Vim because I was correct. Um, yeah, that was pretty good. Then I had. Then I had this. What was this? Oh my god. Oh shit. Oh! Oh! Damn, I missed it. What? Why did I upload that? It didn't even work. <laughs> Lead speedrun starts? That was 2010. Before speedrunning was really a big thing. I didn't even know speedrunning was a thing. Here's some more animations I made. Here's a Falkman production. It's important to note in this case, homeless is referring to a GM on the server. I'm not talking about the homeless people. <laughs> um, so there is this server that I would always cheat my ass off on, and all of the GMs know, knew that I just cheated all the time. Yep, yep, same shit. What's this? Please, <laughs> Made some fake videos here. I I 3D modeled their uh the like depot on this server. Some other things. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's actually pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> ah. Ah. Oh my god, dude. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Woof. Yeah, I was a degenerate. You know. 
Little column A, little column B. Yikes. His obsession with random fruit started early. No, that was the name of the server, Kiwi. It was Kiwi server, run by Admin Kiwi Dan. Whew! I hope you enjoyed the little trip down memory lane. <laughs> I hope no such things from my youth still exist. What do you mean? Those things were fantastic. That was art right there. Cyberbolt, thank you so much for the 169. Gotta pay for a lot. Freedom is not free, Bible Thump. Uh, yeah, someone asked why I don't mind about Odang a freedom phone. Uh, because I don't care about the freedom phone. Uh, it's a scam. And uh, I'll find Odang in a scam. I'm not gonna look for Android Odang, but I'll look for some device-specific shit in it. You know, we'll look at, we'll look at what they're up to. What private server did he play on for TBC? Oh, I played on every single fucking one. Like, actually, if it had more than 10 concurrent players, I probably played on it for at least a day or two. Um, good foresight of you to take screenshots of that. Honestly, I didn't even know I had that many. I've got a lot of other screenshots of, like, all my setups as I kind of grew through the days. Gamozo is the edgy hacker man they warn us of on TV. Yeah, I know. When are you going to write advanced Tibia cheats? I don't know. I'm not really interested in cheating at Tibia, to be honest. You can really only bot. Everything's server-side. What is a freedom phone? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a Chinese phone that's $100 that's being sold for $500 because it ships with, like, a couple uh, apps that conservatives in the U.S. think are, are banned. Um, it, it's, it's people are very upset that they, uh, they can't, uh, they can't threaten, you know, people. And so it's, uh, it's a phone about freedom. Um, man, that sounds like a great product. Gonna go buy that right now. Yup. Twitch chat has ligatures? Yeah, it has forever brains, man. <laughs> Definitely smooth brains, man, more like. <laughs> Whoo! I could buy uh, both phones and do a diff of the firmware. I think they're gonna uh, ship like a slightly custom built OS. 2007, you were around 10 at the time. No, I would have been like 13 or 14. 13 or 14, depending on the month. How much have you had to drink all already? One one little ounce of wine. You know, I'm pre I'm pretty far gone to. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Uh one flaw of Gamozo, he doesn't pour a proper glass. What do you mean a proper glass? What do you mean a baby pour? What do you mean, chat? Chat, why you gotta be so disrespectful? It's on 93 in one of those usernames? Yeah, it was 93. I need to get a decanter, cause this is too, uh, it's too dense, too dense. All right, chat. How's everyone doing today? I hope you enjoyed our little trip through memory lane, going through, having some fun, exploring some of our past. No hot tub. What happened? It's 90 fucking five degrees out. In fact, I probably need to get a fan to blow it on me, cause right now I am hot i am hot it doesn't help that my windows open but i'm hot i learned windbag preview has a dark mode Ooh, you know what always has a dark mode cdb cdb i mean you can use cdb you can use kdb you can use nts ntsb national transportation safety board Buy an AC unit already? Uh, yeah, I, I have AC, whole house AC getting installed in like February, which is the next time that they're available for an install. <laughs> Welcome to an area where 5% of people have AC, and then we just had a week of days over 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like inf Celsius. Uh, yeah, and now everyone's getting AC installed. Uh... 
<laughs> EC business is booming. Isn't CDB command line? Exactly. G it's in. It's in. It's in. Did you seriously say GDB built for Sigwin? <sighs> Yikes. 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 I, too, like to use the worst debugger in the worst environment. Just learned a new reason to hate Java, which happens every day. What? What's your new reason? Kick ban. LLDB though? Nah. Windbag is the pinnacle of debuggers. Honestly, I haven't used LDB in like three or four years when it was like really, really early beta and it like couldn't even attach to a process. Um, maybe it's gotten better. I love how your lips vibrate at the same speed as your camera frame rate. <laughs> Do you use Radere too? No, I prefer to be productive. Um, <laughs> that was weird. If I wanted to learn systems programming, uh, should I start with C or Rust? C, but Rust is better, but C, sadly. Uh, you need to give us tips on making beards like yours? Honestly, the camera does it justice. It's a little patchier in real life. When you get up close and personal, it's a little bit patchier. It's honestly not the best beard. I use an electric razor to trim it, which is like the fucking roughest, like, I mean, it's a smooth shave, but you don't have much control over like how you trim it. So I kind of just YOLO it. I'm not too picky about it. Put a new redeem for Gamozo lip vibration. All right. Yeah, we'll put that in there. Lip vibration. Yeah, everyone's going to fucking know what that means when they click on their button. Ah, uh, yes. I would like a Gamozo lip vibration, please. All right. If that's what chat wants, that's what chat gets. Let's go and find that. Uh, I don't know how to do this. Um... Channel points, manage points and rewards. Uh, uh, create a custom reward. Um, and then this is gonna be a lip vibration. Okay, and this is gonna be a thousand points. Uh, there you go. Now, now you can do lip vibrations. <laughs> I hope new people show up during this. Oh my god. Can I get a copyright on all these channel points for co-creating the lip vibration idea? Quality content. Yeah, welcome to a programming stream. Here we do very advanced operating system development, low-level optimization, compiler dev, and... We do a lot of... At that moment, we he knew he fucked up. Eh, this is science and technology. <laughs> oh my god. Chat. We'll just keep throwing in there throughout the stream and we'll we'll make up for it. We'll make up for the losses. <laughs> Holy shit. <sighs> what did I do, chat? What did I do? What did I do? 
This is like the accent in SpongeBob. You gotta get the tongue out. I've been watching some SpongeBob with my friend recently. Up the price, supply and demand. I think there is like a smart pricing option, but I already closed the tab, so uh Um Ah uh... All right, chat. <laughs> All this and you're not even drunk, so imagine the possibilities. I I would I would say I'm a pretty fun person regardless of if I drink or not. I can uh, I cannot drink and keep up with people pretty easily. So, you know, can we get tell Woodpecker to fuck off for 10,000 points? Why was this our first channel point? <laughs> Why was this what we did for our first channel points? Holy shit. I, first th I think the first redemption is checked. 990 more to go. Ah, uh, I just want to get fuck Nikita point redemption. Oh, we got another. <sighs> Running out of breath, chat. You're trying to kill me? Oh. <laughs> Can we please re re Yeah, okay. Okay, chat. We'll do some fucking content. Uh, viewer rewards, channel points. Chat, 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 chat. Channel points suggestions. Channel point suggestions. Oh, days. Mm-hmm. And we got to make a logo for it. We got to make a 112 by 112. I have to do three different sizes. Okay. 112 by 112. God, I haven't heard this emo-ass song in so long. Um... Delete the project for 200k points. I'd do that for much cheaper. Reward option, get a plushie. These plushies are expensive. Let me go get let me go, go get a plushie. Yeah, these plushies are pretty awesome. Finally got the ice cream plushie. Yeah, the waffle cone, specifically named after the last IL. Is it not fucking awesome? Uh, no, like on camera and then you stack them behind you? Hmm. Hmm. 100K to switch to a Minecraft stream. Yikes. All right, let's uh, let's see what I can do here. Let me see. I really need statistics of like um. I really need statistics of like how many fucking points people have, because I know some people have a lot of points. They can crowdfund big rewards with channel points, price them high to last longer, and encourage more participation. Okay, uh, what's a reasonable amount of channel points? Okay, we're gonna say a uh, hot tub stream. I, I do a hot, I do a hot tub stream. Uh, here we go, and uh, we're gonna have seven days to hit this goal. Oh, there's a maximum contribution. I think we can do this. This is a tough one. Here we go. Hot tub stream. There you go. Hot tub stream. Use Emacs 750k. I'd rather die. Um. Okay. Uh. Let's see. Uh. Let's see. Uh. 
Um, plushy. Uh, get a plushy on display behind streamer. And then this will be this will be ten thousand points. That's an expensive one. There you go. Get a job at Microsoft five hundred k. God damn it! All right, so we got one plushie. Well, now I need to not have wine get knocked over. Wait, it's just one plushie. You get an apple pie. Apple pie is what you get. Apple pie, a la mode, little drop of ice cream on top. This is, oh my God, there's a lot of them. One, two, three, four. So this is Askill, and then I need four more plushies. Fuck. Fuck. Okay, so then we got, then we got for I Pet Detective. You are Cherry Pie. Cherry Pie. Congratulations on being Cherry Pie. Uh, we gotta like move all this shit to make room. And then I have to not spill wine on it. Uh, all right, we got a Cherry Pie. We got a, a Waffle Cone. Who wants to be Waffle Cone? Moogie, you're gonna be a you're gonna be a waffle cone. Okay, you're kind of sideways. We've got the apple pie. Shit. Then we've got Godling. You're gonna be a you're gonna be a sushi roll. Godling, this is you. This is you. We got a sushi roll named after sushi roll is named after. My CPU fuzzing kernel. Or more specifically, the first Vec Emu kernel that I then repurposed. Then we have a cinnamon bun. Cinnamon bun's gonna be hard target four. Hard target four is gonna be a cinnamon bun. All right, and then I need three more shit. All right, then, oh my God, <laughs> you fuckers. 3155, you're gonna be a taco. Named after an Android exploit. There you go, taco. Then, we got, uh, then we got GXKZ. GXKZ, you're gonna be a stingray. You're a stingray. Yoink. All right. And then, slain and corporal, you're gonna be a snuff. This is this is like my childhood stuffed animal, and I have a bunch of snuffs. Snuffs are the best. They're fucking amazing. You're gonna be a snuff. It's a polar bear. You're a polar bear. All right, all right. Shit. Uh. Oh my God. There's three more. Fuck. All right, then we have, uh, oh geez, I'm falling behind. Uh, Koyaso, you're gonna be a, a grizzly bear. 
Are you gonna be a grizzly bear? There you go, you're a grizzly bear. Um, Nikito, I did pick this one out for you. You're gonna be gonorrhea. You're gonorrhea, also known as the clap. There you go, you're gonorrhea. <laughs> uh, Lilalek, you're gonna be Ebola. You're gonna be a little Ebola virus. Woo! That's you. Uh... <laughs> uh... Oh my God. I see like one, two, three, four, five more. I don't know if I have five more. <laughs> I don't know if I have five more, chat. Okay. So, uh, we've got, we've got Manatee Appreciator, you got a mini snuff. A tiny mini snuff. You get to be a, a little mini snuff. Then we have Oscrallin. You're gonna be a maggot. You're just a maggot. That's it. Then we've got an 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 animal. You're gonna be a you're gonna be a hamburger. Also named after an Android exploit. Uh, 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 all right. Then we have, uh, Jude MVM. You're going to be a small grizzly snuff. A little, you got a little moon on your, on your belly because you're standing up to look at the moon. You're a little grizzly bear. A little grizzly snuff. Um, then we got Nysla. Nice light, you're gonna be a big snuff again, but this is a special textured snuff. This is a limited release snuff. Special texture. Oh shit. All right. Kale Sims, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Hell yeah. All right, I think we got all caught up. We, we did it. Oh, the big fox. The big fox, you're gonna be a mini snuff. You're gonna be a, a mini snuff here. That's you, that's what you look like. The big fox, more like the big bear. All right, there we go. Huh, 715209. You're gonna be a snuff that has been cuddled to death that it's torn. This was, I think, the first snuff that I had and it is, uh, it's seen better days. You can see where like the fur has fallen out because it's gotten so much love. Uh, you're gonna be that one. All right. All right. Uh, dispersion. Uh, you're gonna be another uh, mini snuff. This time, a, a little bit, a little bit better condition. This one's mint. All right. And I think I'm out of plushies, chat. <laughs> I'm out of plushies, chat. <sighs> All right, there you go. Scammed. Yeah, exactly. Get fucking scammed. 40k points left. Shit. <laughs> kind of glad Gamosa's a plushy and not a furry kind of person. What's wrong with being a furry? Hey, if you if you have your own kink and you're into your your sort of thing, Go out and fucking slay. Go find weirdos who want to fuck you. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's something you want to do, go have some goddamn adult consensual fun, and I'm not going to judge it. <laughs> Lots of lip vibrations. We might have to up the cost of a lip vibration to 5k. Yeah, lip vibration's going to go to 5k, chat. Uh, what else do we want to do? Um, what kind of degenerate things can he do? How did he get those plushies? I, I kind of like all the snuffs I got usually one a year while I was a child. 
I got like one a year for like Christmas. And then the other ones are all named after like exploits or projects. Um, the inflation is out of control. I didn't know people had so many channel points. Holy shit. <laughs> Been sitting on these for years. Oh God. Yeah, we need we need more rewards. You call yourself a Gamozo fan? I'm fucking loaded on channel points, bro. I highlight every message because I'm just that jacked. Try talking in chat again when you're a true fan. Oh my god. Uh, oh god, here comes the copy pasta. <laughs> the big fox, you did it wrong. You fucking degenerates, chat. You degenerates. <laughs> Hello, I'm 12, and what is this? Uh, Estas endulzado? Um, I don't know what that means, whether I am that or not. Uh, am I drunk? Endulzado? What does Endel Sato mean, chat? He's trying to wear us down so he can't afford the more expensive rewards. A sugar daddy! You know, for the for the right cost. You know? If you know how to give me a good time, I can always be a sugar daddy. You know? You have to you have to know how to make that booty work. You gotta you gotta give me a run for my money. Full momentum shit posting. Oh my god, chat. What a bunch of degenerates. What a bunch of dege degenerates, chat. <sighs> I'll dress in a furry suit if it means Gams pays for my dinners. I have a tendency to pay for people's dinners. I like, I like taking people out for a nice dinner. I'm a big fan of that. I love a, I love a nice romantic dinner. We want more Spanish. Quiero Espanol. <laughs> there you go, THX. I dress in a furry suit for free if someone provides the suit. I'm sure someone in this chat can organize that for you, Nikito. Boys, you've made me proud. Oh, uh, you don't show them your lip vibrations on the first date, though, do you? No, 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 no. And my first date, I try to see if they, uh, if they want to join my OnlyFans. Dating to me is advertisement. Uh, is this el primero? Uh, is is uh something uh, other other number one? Uh, so the other number one, the, uh, the, the other, the other something, the other, a uh, premio? F uh, uh, fuck. God, I, I've, I'm rusty. Do you like cold tea? You mean iced tea or cold tea? Uh, <laughs> there you go, THX. Any coding today? Yeah, we'll get to some coding. Anyone know if the furry suits have a hole cut out in the crotch? I would hope so. Ah? Mmm. It depends. You know, it, it kind of depends. Like, sometimes... Sometimes you want the fur on fur action. You want the friction. You want the heat, the sweat. But sometimes... Getting the fursuit off is some of the fun. It's like unwrapping a gift. You know? Um... Is that another prize? Ah, there we go. Okay. Ah, is that another reward? Sp Spanish? Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, I can, I can do this. Uh, speak some broken Spanish. Uh, this is gonna be 10,000. There you, there you go, because it's gonna be embarrassing. My free suit has so many holes, it looks like, jeez. More holes, the better, I say. Rugburn kink. Oh, God. 
God, we're going full degen today. <laughs> oh, speak some broken Spanish. Hola, Luis me, uh, Luis me, como esta? Oh, slain and corporal, shit. Uh, do I just do I just say what people tell me to say in chat in Spanish? Oh, I might say some fucked up things if I do that. Gamozo killing it today. Hell yeah, we're just chilling right now. You'll be in the two. Uh, 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 ba, 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 ba. Yo hablo un poquito de español, uh, uh, pero cuando, uh, uh, cuando, <laughs> cuando estoy pequeño, uh, when I was little, I don't think that translates, I think that uh, doesn't translate. Cuando estoy pequeño, uh, hablar con uh, mucho fuck. I spoke much better. <laughs> Hola amigo, como esta? Reformed, ag reformed again. Perfecto. Now speak German. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? <laughs> Mucho fuck. Hola, supermercado de uh, las bancos por aquí. Uh, the, 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 the supermarket of the something here? Uh, the, uh, of, of the banks? Bank supermarket? No, that bunk? Huh? That was brutal enough for that was not brutal enough for German. It's got to be guttural. Huh? De joven, de joven, yes, as a kid, mi español era mejor. It was better. I know that because chat, chat, chat. I grew up. I grew up in Madison, Wisconsin. And that is where I learned my Spanish. And where is Oscar Mayer based? Where is Oscar Mayer based? Is it based in Wisconsin? Is it based in, in Madison? Mi balogna tiene nombre, eso es ese a r. Mi balogna se apellida, m y a y e r. Oh, como el día a torre y si preguntas te diré que Oscar Mayer es mejor con B O L O G N A. <laughs> we learned that in uh, in Spanish class. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, it's the, it's the, as a Spanish speaker, I don't understand anything. My baloney has a first name. It's O-S-C-A-R. <laughs> Add a tag Spanish to channel. I live by Madison. Hell yeah, I love Wisconsin. I don't know if those were real words. They are, they translate correctly. <sighs> Ah. Uh. <laughs> Whew. Come on. Was that not the best goddamn singing you've ever seen in your life, chat? <laughs> huh. I don't know how I'll never forget that. I'll be able to sing that when I'm a when I'm a an old adult playing Smash Bros. No, it wasn't? What? 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 You just don't understand the thick accent. Redemption for singing the song? <sighs> you should move to Mexico. Ooh. Honestly, I think I'd like Mexico. Mexico's kind of kind of a chill place. Use only Spanish variables in Rust now. I'm a native Spanish speaker. What do you mean? Mi bologna tiene nombre. My baloney has a uh, has a name. It's O S C A R. It is O S C A R. Mi bologna tiene. Uh, uh, me bologna se apellida. My my baloney's last name is M A Y E R. Y todo el día comeré. Every day I eat it. 
Y si preguntas te daré. And if you ask me, I will say que Oscar Mayer es mejor. Uh, that Oscar Mayer is the best. Con B O L O G N A with B O L O L G N A. Baloney. Come on, is that not? Is that not fine? More or less. Más o menos. Uh, <laughs> what a load of baloney. Hey, that's what my teacher taught me, okay? That's what my teacher taught me. Someone, like, drove up an axe and I'm very curious why. What are they doing up there? What are they doing up there? <laughs> How long until only Spanish is a thing? I think we were making uh, an image for the O days, weren't we? Uh, came for code, stayed for lip vibrations in Spanish class. What the fuck are they doing up there? Yeah, they're backing out. They're backing out. They realize that they're not where they're supposed to be. Oh, I think they thought that was the trailhead because it's a dirt roll road. What a waste of channel points. <laughs> oh, yeah, I taught I taught people some basic Spanish. What microphone? AT twenty twenty. It's okay. I really want to get the the uh, the big road mic, but I'm I'm too I'm too unemployed. Um. All right. <laughs> They have to come to take their language back only if they can make it past our goddamn wall that keeps them immigrants out. We love Mexicans here. Well, at least half of America does. Uh, <laughs> uh Cliff just that part. No! My reputation as a friendly streamer goes away. Set the wall on fire, it will be a decent firewall. Ah, uh, yes, because ladders don't exist, or tunnels. Um... <laughs> All right. Um... All the crazy things a poor unemployed fella has to do on Twitch. Yeah, you know. Are you fuzzing Nest games? Kind of. We're going to find some new speedrun strats. Chat, you ready to do some programming? You ready to do some programming, chat? Because I need to find where this code was. What did, we, what did we name this project? Oh, we called it Milkshake. Oh, we got Milkshake. And of course, chat's gonna say no, because that's what they do. They always say no, because it's chat. Bunch of degenerate assholes. Yep, yep, nope, no one wants to play. But our channel points icon? <sighs> Alright, what do we want to make for our channel points icon, chat? What do we want to make for our channel points icon? We need more plushies. I'm out of plushies. I probably have a couple in storage. Milkshake uh, sounds uh, horrible translated to Spanish. Nah, it's fine. Um, so we have an O day here. What is this gonna be? I can't do art, chat. I can only trace things. A crab? Chat, do you want me to try and draw a freehand crab? Is that what you really want me to try to do, is draw a crab? All right, first we have to pick a crab color. That's a crab color. Um. Uh, a freehand Ferris. Mm-hmm. So we've got, like, uh, we've got, like, a body here. And then, like, they have, like, little pinchers. Okay? And they're just hearts. They're hearts because I love chat so much. Uh, and then we got one of these, and one of these, and one of these. There's six legs? Eight legs? How many le legs do crabs have? I think it's eight. I'm not a marine biologist. Okay, and then we can fill in the center, and then we'll add two black dots for eyes. 
and then a smiley face. Um, and then we have to uh, pick up this color again for the claws. And then on the claws, we're gonna add, uh, we're gonna darken this line just a little bit, and then we're gonna add a little accent for the like claw area here. We're adding a little bit of shading. Um, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, channel points. Oh, does that need to have a transparent background? Yeah, it does. So we'll just uh, make a new layer. And then we'll, uh, I guess we can move this layer down. And then we should hopefully, hopefully we can wand it. Uh, let's change the fuzziness. Come on. Okay. Okay. Uh, I might up the fuzziness a bit here. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, no, it's not as fuzzy as I want. We're going to do a, a one pixel grow on that. Oh, we lost the legs, but that's okay. We can put the legs back on. That's easy. That's easy. There we go. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, there you go. Channel points, export as a ping, done, done. All right, so now we just have to set that as channel points, as the channel points icon, customize. This is the 112 by 112. And then we have to do a couple other ones. Um, we got we to gotta resize this. Uh, scale image to new size, pixels, they want a 56 as well, so here's a 56, export that as channel points 56, and then they also want a 28, uh, 28, okay, and then, uh, export that as channel points 28, all right, 56, 28, uh-huh, uh-huh. Save. <laughs> there you go, chat. Are you happy now? Oh my god, they show up. <laughs> All right, that's enough that's enough art for now, chat. Looks good. You asked for it, chat. You asked for it. Making an emote too? Uh, we, we could draw it in a higher resolution if we want an emote. I didn't expect a load without a complete refresh of Twitch. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> You're better at making crabs than coding for sure. God damn it. It does look really good. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It looks like absolute shit and I love it. Chat! Chat! Actual mirror image. Yeah, I got it right. What kind of fuckery did you allow for add 5 and R to RR? Overloading? Oh! Chat, do we have overloading in Rust? Raise your hand if we have overloading in Rust. No, no, we don't chat. No, no, we don't chat. <laughs> Hell yeah, we don't because overloading is fucking awful. Joey's watching those. What's up? Um, Impl ad for Fubar. Mm. 
All right. Macro rules disagrees. Hell yeah, it does. All right. Yeah, so the way that we did this is uh, uh, when we do an add, actually, we don't have an add. We have a macro. Um, it has to implement an into ref. And into ref is found in IL source into ref. Um, and into ref is implemented for either a word, which will make a new allocation uh, for that reference, or also a reference itself. So like in this case, R is a reference, or T is a reference, but it can also be a, a constant. Um, yeah. Name a variable reward? Ah. I would do that, but I do kind of care about my code quality. Here, here, here. Here, here, we're gonna add a reward, we're gonna add a reward, and, and it's gonna be slightly different. Here's what it's gonna be, and we're gonna have to make this expensive. Um. Okay, here we go. And then, uh. Uh-huh. Okay, there's a new reward, chat. There's a new reward. <laughs> um. Uh, I'll add another one, too. Uh. Um. Okay, mm-hmm. Th this one's gonna be more expensive. This is 25,000. There we go. <laughs> Bro, I didn't come here to write documentation. Yeah, exactly, got fucked, chat. Did you impulse some of the simplifications? Yes. We, chat, did we not write the best goddamn code you've ever seen the last stream? <laughs> 50k reward for merging two files? Yikes. Oh, I'm gonna add another one. Um, here we go. All right, there's a new reward in town. There's a new reward. It's it's the first 100K reward. <laughs> Chat, how do you like that, that new reward? <laughs> Rewrite it in Rust. No, I'm saying, like, if we're ever writing a script, or we're writing shellcode in C, or we're writing, like, a small little integration, or, like, a QMU mod, and y'all want to see how I integrate Rust into existing code bases, or, like, write a fucking RTOS in Rust, we'll fucking do it, chat. How does that work if you only write Rust? We've written some Python here. I wrote some Python the other day. I can't show it because it probably is considered game hacking. Gonna write Kimu and Ross hell yeah for five minutes, then you get sick of it. Yeah, I mean that's true. All it just means that you preempt it. Turns into just rewrite. God damn it. <laughs> it's in your fucking awesome. Uh hope you're having a wonderful day. I don't think we've ever met IRL. Someday. Uh rewrite C and Rust, yes. Yes. Rewrite Ghidra in Rust. Oh, that would be so fucking nice. Someday. Someday when all this shit's over. Huh. Rewrite Ghidra in Rust. What was Pegasus? Pegasus is, uh... Is that the shitty uh, NSO implant? 
And he thinks that we don't have to use Jython. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, uh. All right, chat. Iron Python. God, I fucking love this hat, chat. It's pretty damn good. 200k reward? Rewrite milkshake in Jython? Yeah, uh, no. No. Reverse engineering Pegasus? I don't really like malware reversing. How far are we from running an actual Nestrom? We could... We could probably execute our first instructions today if we're not lazy, but it won't be in the JIT. It won't be in the JIT. Um, there's a test room. Oh, we're not going to run a test room. A test room would be very hard to run because it will actually test things. Okay, anyways, uh, we wrote some insanely good optimizations the other day. And IL source opt uh, re uh, simplify. So what we do is we simplify some common symbolic expressions of what do we do? We do ands with zero, ands with f's. Uh, basically, like all of these, yeah, an add with zero, a sub with zero, and zor with zero, or shift with zero, those we just pass through the original, so we just delete that instruction entirely. An and with zero becomes a zero. An or with f's becomes f's. An and with f's be is a pass through. And a shift of greater than the bit size is a zero. And then we do the same thing for the uh, left-hand side. If we have the immediate on the left-hand side, once again, if it's zero and it's a, a, a c c commute, why do I always think it's communicative? It's not. It's co commu com commutative? Like a commutator? Like a commutator bar? Um, we have that. Communist. That's what it is. So if, if the operation is communist, then we also have that here. Uh, if we're shifting zero, it becomes a zero in any condition. Shift arithmetic right. If the immediate is all Fs, then it becomes all Fs. Same with or with Fs. Uh, and and, that sort of thing. Um, all right. And then we also have things with two register inputs. Ands and ors are nops uh, with itself. And then zors and subs with itself is a zero. Does anyone have any other ideas for uh, symbolic nops? It has to be a single expression. It can't be like an add followed by a sub. We'll do that later. Show me remap output to input. It is this. We replace the, the ref count to the old register with a zero. And then we uh, decrement it by the number of inputs, which is usually one. So we decrement the number of uses since we're getting rid of an instruction. Then we move the old uses to the new instruction. And then we remap that through the table. Ligma is a no-op. What's ligma? But yes, we did implement redirect. And the way that redirect works is that goes on... We actually spent a decent amount of time refactoring that. Um, that was on value. So on value, we made a value structure that holds all the values. We have a way of pushing a value. We have a way of resolving a value. And this will walk through redirects until it resolves. And then get to the end. Lookup will do the same thing. Reg uh, is going to use lookup to resolve something and then look up the value if it's a register. Replace something with an immediate, just replaces it with an immediate. Remapping it sets it as a redirection. So uh, we now have ways of doing redirects, so we should always only have one register in that table. Uh, and we don't have to do an ON operation to perform those remappings. Crane lift also has a redirect thing. Yeah, it makes sense. How to understand this 101 tutorial HD link 100% real? What? House tour when? Probably never. I would have to clean my house before a stream. It's a mess. You can you can tell it's a mess. Ah, uh, all right. 
So, there are a couple of things that I want to do, chat. There's a couple things that I want to do. I want to write our constant propagation. Um, and basically what that means is we have to write an emulator. Um, and that's going to be similar to what we had before, where it will operate on none values. None value. Sick. Uh, so it'll operate on none values. And then I still want to add a cross instruction simplify. And the goal of the cross instruction simplify is if we have an add. Uh, if we have an add x with 5 uh, is equal to y, then I also want z equals sub x6, uh, sorry, y6, and I want this to resolve into an add, uh, or technically this just becomes a sub uh, x1, right? I really want to write this optimization. So which one do you want to see first? The emulator that does constant propagation? Um, or do you want to see the uh, this simplification? Simp? Chat, you want to see the simp? Fuck! That's the harder one, chat! D colon. <laughs> too far. Broken heart, you too. Holy shit. Uh, I'm unsubbing now. Ah, uh, let me sub so I can unsub. Jesus, chat. We got some savages today. All right. We're going to write the simplify routine for chat. <laughs> I'm Steve. Thank you so much for gifting the sub to our beggar. Phenomenal. There you go. Now I can. Yay! I forgot I made the little uh, Russ dancing uh, icon for subs. I'm pretty happy with that one. Don't forget to like and subscribe, chat. It's the only way that I can afford to live because I'm unemployed. So use your Twitch Prime subs now. So sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, let me work on something over here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm just readjusting my uh, my tower here. Uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, all right, now they're stable. <sighs> all right, we're good. <sighs> um. <sighs> <laughs> 
We'll write name on arm for sub. I don't have any non-permanent markers. And I don't want any of you permanently on my arm. I already carry you enough. Um... <laughs> would you apply to Oxide? <sighs> Oxide is on the list. It is a place I think would be really fun to work. But the pay is sadly really low. Like, it's low enough that it's hard to be convinced. But I think it'd be really fun. It'd be a good learning experience. I'd work with really fun people. Would you apply to Sugma? I don't know what that is. There you go, Frozy. Froze G? Froze G? Write out a name in arm for sub. Arm has really weird flag setting on sub, so I don't really like it, to be honest. Are you going to post these videos to YouTube? I did yesterday. Uh, I'm waiting for them to process, which usually takes a couple days. Sugma nuts! Sugma balls! <laughs> you got me! You got me so good! God, I wasn't expecting that one, chat. <sighs> I got, I got so got by chat. Y'all got me. Free lip vibration. Nice. What about Candace? Yeah, I don't know about Candace either. We're the real winner. You got, got. Yep. You got me. Would you be okay with working on Sug on these people? Mmm. I don't know. Can you tell me, like, what what are sugging these people? He's still working on his lip vibration debt. Yes, I am. Uh, what should I study to better follow your streams? No rest specific uh, compilers. I love you. You're gonna have to compete with my girlfriend. <laughs> um. Um, uh, to follow my streams best. I don't know. I'm going to let chat answer that. Chat, what, what, what has made you show up to these fucking streams? Because you're the real, I'm not going to say it, but, you know, something's not a hundred percent. 99% stream, 1% coding. I like rust and perf. Okay. Letting that imposter syndrome grow. Don't worry, we all got imposter syndrome. Shout out, shout out to my friend imposter syndrome. You know what? We need to make an imposter syndrome emote. I don't know, how do you, how do you emotify imposter syndrome? Like, I mean, is it just a Xanax pill? <laughs> this is... <laughs> I originally followed because uh, you did Russ and I liked Russ, but then I realized your content is actually pretty interesting and I always learn interesting stuff here. Hell yeah. Okay. So I do think we have a decent amount of people who are here to learn shit. Zuck, zuck. Thank you so much for the 393. What perfect number is that going to make? 199.98. 199.98. That is the cheap price. That is what I cost for one night of Gamozo. It's $199.98. We'll take you off for a nice dinner, have a romantic conversation, um, and we'll talk about how sad and lonely we are. It will be very romantic. Uh, I can't remember why I followed. Yeah, how many people? Raise your hand if you came here from when uh, What's-His-Face raided me. Um... Fucking dumbass coding shitty shitty project person YouTuber Michael Reeves hell yeah Michael Reeves <laughs> Holy shit we actually got people from that I don't think prostitution is allowed by Twitch I'm not saying I'm gonna put out You just get a romantic conversation Look 
There's many people in my life who know it's not very easy to get me to put out. I'm not very easy, chat. I know that you think you can give me the I loves you, uh, I love yous and you're going to get to my heart, but it's going to take a lot more simping to get to my heart, chat. It's going to take a lot more simping. And unfortunately, money's not going to work either. You you got to you got to make me swoon, chat. Uh you're in my recommended channels bit. I saw your blog one time, I think. Oh, that's interesting. I'm surprised I showed up in there. Came here by accident when you hacked a printer? Ooh, I need to actually finish that. Although, we could use this emulation, uh, this emulator to, to hack the printer, which would be kind of fun. You only get into his heart with a fast coat. Yeah, that's pretty ac accurate. What about, what about a bottle of 15-year-old and uh, some good ice cream? Mmm. I don't know. I mean, I've got a bunch of 21s. So that might not be convincing enough. Been following for one year, two months? Okay. Nikito, one year, five months. Damn. What was the good year for wine? What was it, like, 2014? Had a lot of really good bottles. Was it 2014 or 2013 in the U.S.? That one day Gamoza had 5k viewers, I remember, yeah. Did the printer also have a 6502? No, we'll just write an arm lifter. It's really not that much different. It's the same thing. Crimp Deck has been following for 15 minutes, 42 seconds. Shout out to all the new followers. Don't forget, if you like the content, you can click follow so Twitch automatically reminds you when I stream so you can show up here and make my ego grow. Yay! <laughs> oh my god, Twitch chat is doing some spamming. Okay. So. Uh, don't forget to ring that bell. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know, I'll draw a lichen. Here's a lichen. Lichen. Subscribe. Lichen sub. That's what a lichen looks like. I think they have a tail too, so there's a there's a tail. Did you know that you might have a free sub available through Prime Gaming? I did not know that. Could you tell me more about that? <laughs> All right, chat. Let's design. Do you have a pizza oven? No, I was thinking about building one outside. I was thinking about making a pizza oven outside. Like building a like a brick oven that would also double as like a fireplace a little bit, like for for hanging out outside. I, I was thinking like basically build like uh, a little bit a little bit of brick here and then you have like the oven on top and a small little chimney and then have like four openings with just small pillars between them so it's like a little bit of a fireplace. I was thinking about building this. I have like a, a dog park dog run in my yard uh, that I don't need that uh, I could kind of replace with this and it would be really nice. Prime Gaming offers you a free sub to a channel of your choosing every month and many additional benefits. Really? Do they do that? I had no idea. I, I've, ne I've never seen that. I don't even know what goes into that process. Where would you source bricks from? Uh... uh Bender's shiny metal ass. I'm gonna draw a bender. I'm really curious how this bender's gonna turn out. I don't, I, I'm not an artist. As you might know, chat. Oh boy, that head was too small. And that was not the right shape for that. Here we go. Uh, uh huh. Mm hmm. It's bender. It's bender. There you go. Bite my shiny metal ass. I think he has three fingers. There you go. There's Bender. Good apart from the head. <laughs> DMCA takedown. Yeah, that's where the bricks come from. 
What was the very sad cartoon movie that had a similar robot? Are you are you talking about the uh, the Fry's dog episode? Are you talking about that? The Fry's dog episode? Bender has a 6502 brain? I think so. He's also he's also it's in Mexico. I didn't come here to feel, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we need to figure out how we want to do simplify if we want it to simplify across instructions. So that, as we kind of talked about before, is like x equals... Chad, how do you like that I'm drawing on stream now? Do you like that? Do you like the new drawings that I can do on stream? Um, add uh, a plus 5. Y equals sub uh, x minus 6. And what we want to do is we want to simplify this into x, actually, we need to keep x around. We need to remap y is equal to sub a minus 1. I don't like my, uh, my brain for not understanding everything for now. So this is what we want to do. We want to take this operation and we want to collapse it into this operation. They fit nicely, but I hope we can get draw IO diagrams. Oh, I can do squares. Here you go. Here's draw IO. There you go. And then if we color these, we made abstract art. Um. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, that's too similar to the other red. Let's get a let's get one of these colors. That one. That's a good one. Um, yeah, so this, this, uh, this right here represents kind of the feelings of code. First, you start out a little blue, you start out a little blue, but then once your code is not working, you read this in, in this order, this is how it works, like, it just makes sense. So you start out a little blue, and then you get angry, you get mad because your code's not working. And then you start to you start to get relaxed. You get to like a calm, this is more like a cool, like sandy beach. This is like a happy day. And then right here, this right here, this is when you delete all of your code and rewrite it. So this is actually a very specific pattern. So while I know you lowly, you know, smooth brains probably don't really understand what actually goes into this process. But this art actually really shows you the condition of what it's like to be a programmer. You start off, you're a little bit down, you don't necessarily know how you want to tackle a problem. As you advance, you get more frustrated. The language doesn't have the APIs you want. The library you're using doesn't work in the ways that it's said to do, or the documentation is bad. But then, you kind of change the goalposts. You move the deadline, you move what needs to be done for the project, and you get a little bit happier, you feel happy or comfy. And then finally, that's when you reach to the pit of despair. And that's when you just have to delete all of the code. Um, wait, there's stages other than the sad one. Yikes. Oh, there's a smooth brain icon, an emote. Hell yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's the RMRF star stage. Yup. Is that not an accurate representation of what it's like to be a programmer, chat? So you have to check uh, that A hasn't changed. We know that A hasn't changed since it's uh, since we know that this is SSA form. So you don't even have to worry about that. But yeah, we have to do like a partial evaluation, which is very, very difficult. Too real. Pepe hands. All right, chat. 
Don't know I'm a fraud. Well, that's part of the imposter syndrome stage. Um, so. How do we do this? How do we do this, chat? So, if we're on an instruction, like we are here, we can see that it's a candidate. And what are potential candidates to this operation? Things which are, um... Um... I think any expression with at least one immediate. Is that true? If you have at least one immediate, it can be simplified? Is that true for everything? Not in the, uh, This is for ads. That is true. Subs. That is true. Okay, chat, let's draw a table. You want to draw a uh, table, chat? We're going to make a table. All right, so we have a table here. And we have these things, and we have these things. And we have ads. And we have subs. So, can an ad and an ad be simplified if both of them have one immediate? Yes. Add and a sub, add and a sub, all of those. Uh, we'll say that this is the LHS and this is the RHS. Okay, uh, what other operations do we have? You want to traverse the tree in reverse? I think you can only simplify according to algebraic constraints. Right. Um, so the instructions that we have, we have... We are, uh, reg reads and writes we cannot simplify. We can with another optimization pass that we'll write. Adds and subs, as long as both of them have one immediate, they can be uh, compressed. Ands, ors, zors. Um... So, ands you can do if it's a superset. Ors you can do if it's a subset. Right? Like, if you have two ors together and one is like an or with seven and one is an or with five, that's just the same as an or with seven. Um, shifts can actually be uh, added together, but only if it's right-hand side. Are ands and ors associative? Yes. Um, so are xors. Um, hmm. Hmm. Colon thinking. Um. So do we... Hmm. Is it true that we can just go through the graph backwards? Or go through the instructions backwards specifically. We're not actually traversing the graph backwards. Um, are you going to apply this if a result is used twice? Um, yeah, I think I still will. Yeah, I think if I do this in reverse, it actually works. Uh, or do I want to do this forwards? How do I want to express this? The problem is my optimization pass is already forwards. 
and I want to actually do it for it because the later occurrence of the instruction is the one that I actually want to use, which kind of makes that tough. Um, chat, how are we going to do this? Because we don't have a way of viewing previous instructions. Ah, uh, we could actually make copies of the instructions. I think they're relatively cheap, so we could. So far, our optimizations are extraordinarily cheap, and that's what I really like. Um, I'm a little afraid of like what it's going to cost us to do this. We need some way that we can refer to previous instructions. And specifically, we need to be able to look up input registers. I think we do need to make the database of instructions that have one immediate operand. One immediate operand and one non uh, and one variable operand. And then we need a reference to the instruction that caused that. But then we can't do this drain filter because we're borrowing instructions as mutable. And that's where it's kind of tough. Um, and this is where we could maybe go to what we were talking about before, where when we want to remove an instruction, we could instead replace it with a NOP and then let that instruction get removed at a later point. That way we can use references to previous instructions. But then that's another OM pass, which I don't like. Right now, our optimization pass is just straight ON. It's literally just ON, which is pretty fucking incredible. Um... Hmm. What are you thinking, chat? What are you thinking? Do you have any brilliant ideas of how we solve this problem? Once and for all. This is literally the optimization pass that caused us to rewrite our IL because we had to like radically change the way that we approach the problem. Threads, threads aren't the solution here. Um. So. Honestly, ON is not that expensive. That I think replacing with NOPS will be really cheap because the second ON pass is going to be prefetched. And if it's prefetched, it's really fucking cheap. What if you have uh, A plus 6, X minus 5, X minus 3? How would you trigger the removal of X? Uh, I wouldn't. Well, I would... Y and Z would get propagated with X, and then X would get DCE'd. I'm not worried about that. That's already solved. It's not even an edge case to us. Really, what we need to do is we need to have a database that lets us know what to optimize in like ON where we can just look up the instruction really fast. Um, and I don't really know how we want to do that. Isn't this where SSA form shines? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. This is really easy. Like writing this optimization is not hard. Writing it in a performant way is hard. Figuring out how it interacts with our existing data structures, how we change the formats of what we do, uh, that is what makes it difficult. And I, I don't really know how I want to do that. Currently, we're doing a forward pass, and we could have a forward pass where we look up the values for instructions, and if one is an immediate... For certain operations, and we could just start with adds and subs, 
uh, we could accumulate a database, and then we would have to change these to not removing the instructions, but instead... Re oh, we actually do a replace with NOP already. But we remove it as we go through it. Okay. Um, if we do for inst in self.instructions, and then we do this. Um, self.instructions dot uh, retain x we want to keep x where um if it doesn't match a nop so uh remove nops so this is a uh, remove nops from the stream so this should be identical to what we did before except we uh this if we don't match a nop then we keep it then here we get rid of this so this should be identical to what we did before, except it's uh, two times n iterations. Um, um, this might be I I then. Um, mute self dot inst instructions. Ah, instructions. So if we pass in all of the instructions to these operations, then we need to go and grab uh, IL source opt DCE. Um, um, Holy shit. That wine's starting to hit. Uh, maybe as a naive idea, you could generate a graph representation according to the constraints you defined. Maybe going back um, to those would be possible with a hash table. I can't do hash table lookups. They're too slow. How is this not messing with IL reg indices and offsets? Um, because IL registers aren't based on their indexes anymore. IL registers are actually encoded in the instruction now. The output register is encoded, so we can just remove instructions. I think you want to con uh, track the constant side. I agree. So what we need to do is we need to change to this new format. So for each pass, we do this on each instruction, and we're going to pass in the instruction index that we're trying to optimize. OK. Um, now we have a DCE pass, and this takes a mutable reference to a vector of instructions, and then we have, uh, an index, which is just a U size, and then we'll do, uh, let mute, uh, let inst is equal to a mutable reference to inst ii. So this is, uh, gets the instruction. Now, this might be increasing the cost because now we have a bounds check there, which kind of sucks, but uh, whatever, we'll make it happen, chat. We're smart. Chat, we're very smart, right? Raise your hand in chat if you are not smart. Chat, don't be such downers. <laughs> chat, chat. Chat, we're going to teach you a thing or two about confidence. We're going to teach you how to be confident, chat. Chat, you are beautiful. You're handsome. You're smart. You understand a lot about code. Uh, and you know how to optimize things. Um, Hell yeah, there we go. So we're basically back to where we were before, but now we have access to all the instructions if we want to do something with them. You make us look bad? You mean it? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I am smart. I am confident in my stupidity. I'm confident in how dumb I am. Chat. Why do you not have confidence, chat? Why are you not proud of what you know? 
Why are you not proud of the people you know, the friends you have, those sorts of things? Let's talk, chat. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be chat's counselor. Uh, hashtag not professional help. What are friends? Friends, Sag. Yikes, chat. Ch yikes. Chat, everyone here has a friend who knows and loves them. I know that. I know that. Because there's always someone better. Well, welcome to my fucking life. What do you think I'm grinding for? <laughs> How do you spell friends? What are friends? Can you eat that? <sighs> chat, chat, chat. If you don't have any friends, you gotta go out there and make some friends. You gotta... <laughs> isn't that a, this shitty TV show? Isn't Friends, like, critically acclaimed to be, like, a fantastic fucking show? Um... Let's see. I need to also plan what I want to do for dinner tonight. Um... Da -da -da -da. But COVID? Go get your vaccine, you fucking anti-vaxxer. Do you have a girlfriend? Of course I have a girlfriend. Why would I not have a girlfriend, chat? Uh, Alexa doesn't count. Right hand? I'm left-handed. Um, if I could, I'd live in a country that, uh... I live in some country that doesn't have vaccines? Really? God damn. That doesn't count. What am I gonna do with all my loneliness, chat? Cortana. Ooh. Ooh. Um, okay, so we're gonna do a forward pass. And then while we do a forward pass, we're going to accumulate some metadata. We're basically the NSA. We're gonna build up some metadata of... What are vaccines? Can you eat that? Um, we're gonna try to accumulate different things about the... What do we want to have? We want to accumulate instructions that have one immediate input and one dynamic input. Rust doesn't count. What do you mean? What do you mean? I learned in school that if you love someone enough, you can get crabs, too. Um... Um... Ads... Ads, we have simplifications. Subs, we have simplifications. Ands, ors, zors. If you made it at least one immediate operand, wouldn't you get cons prop for free? Like, have the whole IL where one side always has to be immediate? I don't like that. That would be really, really hard to optimize at a later stage. Shift left, shift right, shift arithmetic right, sign extend... Um, uh, match friend panic crossbow. Chad, do you think being a nerd makes it harder to make friends? Um, nah, yeah, I agree with that. Yes? 
Do the easy thing first. See where it lands and add Consprop later. Consprop I'm not worried about. Consprop will be easy. I think the lifestyle of a nerd makes it harder to make friends. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Being not socialized makes it harder. Do you think it's harder because you don't meet people? Or do you think it's harder because you don't have the social skills? I don't think I've spoken to another person IRL for like two years. Shit, dude. As bad as that sounds. I mean, I can kind of understand that. Nerds can play board games together. I guess. I guess. <laughs> Let's meet. I'll hug you. There you go. Right there. You just made a friend. No, it might be some creepy internet person, but like what? You know, you take what you can get. Don't meet people because I'm doing something on my own. That's tough. How do you buy food? Uh, I go to the grocery store. Um, which leads to bad social skills eventually. Yeah, that's kind of true. We're all friends here in chat. Aww. I can meet anyone in Seattle. Yeah. Seattle. Seattle or like even even like fucking Bay Area. If you're a nerd, it's really not hard to find find friends. Find people to meet, hang out with. It's really a matter of getting out of your fucking house. Not being such a, such a sap with uh, such bad posture. Hello from Denmark. You said something about friends and I had to follow. Oh, I have no clue what you do. Is that bad? No, no, that's totally fine. Hell yeah, we're writing some. Uh, we're writing an NES emulator right now. I mean, the guy who hasn't talked to anyone in two years. I, I mean, you can you can order food, you can have delivery, or maybe you don't count that. That's not how Danes sound. That Denmark accent, though. No, I literally don't know how Danes would sound. They probably sound like a little German, so they're probably a little mad. Probably a little bit mad. Um, with that lip vibration, Gamoza doesn't have problem making friends. <laughs> yeah, you know what's up. D colon. Nobody understands Danes. Yikes. Why are Germans always mad? I have no idea. I have no idea. Don't bring Germans into this. Hey. Germans just are Germans. What can what can we say? We're mad all the time. German humor is, humor is no laughing matter. <laughs> How many people have been to Germany? Raise your hand if you've been to Germany or are German. I guess that means you've probably been to Germany. Wow. Wow. A surprising amount of people. A surprising amount of people lived here my whole life. So if I hypothetically had a job offer in Germany and hypothetically it was like the same as the US pay, hypothetically, should I go to Germany? Hypothetically? How many Germans do you need to change a light bulb? One. They are very efficient and not funny. Only if they have fiber internet. That is kind of a requirement of mine. Chad, I'm going to put on some music quick. What do I want to listen to? Yes, we can hang out. Hell yeah. Berlin's not bad as a capital, really. Has some nice countryside. What is it like to own a, own a home there? Uh, what do I want to listen to, chat? I have my music on all random. I'm going to listen to more Taylor Swift. And we're going to listen, of course, to Taylor Swift's best album, which is Speak Now Deluxe Edition. Daft Punk. It's European, so pricey. Yeah, welcome to, welcome to the fucking U.S. too. If you have a U.S. job, you can get the first 100... You can get the first 100k tax free? But do I have to pay U.S. taxes? If I get double taxed, fuck that. The Autobahn has sections with no speed limit? Hell yeah. 
German music, uh, please. Das. Uh, wh wait, what's the fucking, um, what's the, Rammstein? Yeah, there you go. No 100k of US income is tax free? German's an easy language. I think you'll struggle with the language. I've heard that learning, learning, learning German is pretty much a must. Yeah, I don't know. Rammstein. Easy language, no object-oriented programming. Who wants to live in Berlin? Where would I want to live if I went to Germany, chat? Honestly, Switzerland is a lot more tempting to me than Germany. Munich, Cologne? Berlin, Munich, Munich. Okay, lots of Munichs. Paderborn. Pad Paderborn. Depends on yourself and preference. I, I like to live where I have mountain views. Mountain views and land. Fuck Bavaria. Damn. This man. Uh, then maybe uh, Bavaria if you want mountains. What is Bavaria? What the fuck is that? Is that a is that a city? It's a city. It's a, it's a state. Uh, let me see. Okay, I guess some mountains. Oh fuck! Oh shit! Those are real mountains. Mmm. But do I have to eat, like, bratwursts for a fucking living? Only in the very south, though. The rest is very flat. Mmm. Of course. I eat brats and, uh... Let's be honest. Germanic food is... Shit. Like, sauerkraut is just ass. I'm sorry. Sauerkraut is shit. Brat, brats are fantastic. I don't know what Rüberst is. Uh, what the fuck is that? Minced veal and pork back bacon? Okay, that's probably okay. It's a weird texture, but that looks probably... It probably is delicious. Now, pretzels are good. They make you eat seven bratwurst upon entry to the country. Sauerkraut is the best thing on earth. I don't like I don't like condiments. Like in general, I don't like mayo. I don't like mustard. I don't like sauerkraut. I don't like horseradish. I just don't like I don't like condiments. Schnitzel schnitzel's okay. They have good donor. Okay, donor's fucking amazing. Get out. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't like I don't like them. I like boring ass bland Midwestern food. Um, I don't need this kind of negativity about condiments in my life. My view is there are people out there who think that you need mayo on a burger, otherwise the burger's too dry. If the burger is too dry without mayo, you overcooked it. You mean don don doner doner? Amazing bread over there. I do like some bread. I do like some bread. Um I I I love fucking bread. I don't know. Now, my family is Swedish and German. So I, I, I would love to have some Swedish meatballs. Swedish meatballs are fucking delicious. Mother Russia, we pay hackers well. You don't pay hackers well. You just look the other way while they uh, commit uh, crimes. Which, to me, is a valid, it's a valid strategy for compensation. Um, 
I concur on the burger mayo thing. Yeah, exactly. Which is paying well. Yeah, ransomware pays great. Uh, you love fucking bread. Why did two people make that joke, chat? Why did two people think that it was appropriate to make that joke? They pay themselves. Yeah, that's the Russia and China model. Moving to Russia when? I I lived with Russians for a while. I know how to drink some uh to drink some vodka. Vodka. I know I'm talking with chat, but I'm still trying to figure out how I want to architect this. Russia also has liberal gun laws. You could get a Bofors 40 millimeter gun. Let me see if that's a gun that I want. Let's be honest. The AR rifle. Oh, okay. That's uh See, in America, we would say it's conservative to be able to get a gun like that because we don't know how to how to name our people. Um, I don't know. I could get a tank. You're multi-threading. That's what I always do. Bread is fucking amazing. Like, really, bread, not this white bread shit. The, hey, white bread is good. I make my own white bread, and it's fucking amazing. Um, no guns in Germany? How am I going to live without guns? How will I protect myself from the police? <laughs> Who the fuck wants people to have guns? Ah, uh, we found the EU. We found the EU person in chat. In America, if you don't have guns, you just die. Love the fluffy US white bread? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like fluffy white bread is actually really fucking good. I do like my uh, French bread quite a bit. How am I going to live without guns? Probably more years. No, 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 no. A gun is to protect yourself from other gun owners. Um, no gun owners, no problem. You know, the only way to protect yourself from a dude with a gun is to have a gun. God damn it, dude. Um, <laughs> but my tyrannical government, <laughs> guns equals equality of strength. No matter who you are, you have equal chances in a fight. <laughs> That's the fucking American dream. <laughs> God damn it. All right, let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. Uh, you can have guns, uh, if you're a hunter or work in security. Uh, you hunt for bugs and work in security, maybe you can get one. Disallowing people from protecting themselves invites crime. Oh, that's, that's the fucking American, the American dream. Partial evaluation to uh, simplify two instructions. Yeah, into one. Yeah. So we need to basically go through and keep a list of all the instructions. Um, let's see. God damn it. Um, what 
works really well in the U.S. Ah, yes, the lowest crime rates. Uh, <laughs> um, so I think we want to, during our pass, um, hmm, lowest, sps. John Brox Snow, thank you so much for the two months, hell yeah, glad you're enjoying the content, the highest crime rates are here in the communities with the strictest gun laws, see, a sub followed by an ad. Someone else has to be an ad. Yeah, who's gonna... <sighs> this is just bad. That's just bad. I, I retract my thank you for the sub because you made that shitty ass pun. So here's what I'm thinking. Since this is supposed to mutate an instruction, I think what we'll do is we'll accumulate the metadata after the instruction has been mutated by the previous pass. John Barack is gonna get optimized out. That was pretty good, yeah. <laughs> Man, that was pretty good. Made me laugh. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, so I think afterwards what we're going to do is we're going to hopefully do a match here. And we're going to do a match on self.instructions II. And if I think all of these we can optimize in some way. Um... We're basically going to do this. And then we're going to be agnostic to the side that has the immediate. Let's just start with ads and subs for now. Chat, raise your hand if you're a sub. <laughs> um match this i am steve oh thank you so much for the submarino hell yeah hell yeah okay so these are uh these are things that are communist so communist operations uh we're gonna say we can flip these two Um, communist operations want our cycles for themselves. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, so we flip the basically anything that has at least one immediate and one register. So if it has one immediate and one register, then we're going to accumulate some metadata. And we'll just start with a vector for now, which is not necessarily what we want, but uh, this is going to be Alec Vec Vec. Jeff B has <laughs> got to pay for the next penis rocket. Hit that sub button. Oh, hell yeah. Um. Now what we can do is metadata dot push sum. Um, what do we have here? Let's just start with reg i and immediate. This is not sufficient yet. So we're going to push that into the metadata. Oh. Hmm, 
I think I can do this O N without iterating through it twice. Um, sorry, I'm doing some texts. Um, Um, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, who wouldn't want to ride a giant penis to the moon? I'm sure I've dated a few that would. That would want a giant penis to the moon or wouldn't want a giant penis to the moon. What did you do to these people? Uh, uh, an anon anonymal. Is there a optimized standard alloc function that gives you an iterator of pairs or triplets over a vector that works kind of like split at mute? Before Ellen after? I don't think so. There's split at mute, which you could index the zero thing, which is probably going to get optimized relatively well. Um, but yeah. Oh, that would certainly take hours of drunken banter. I would need to be drunk. It wouldn't be possible due to lifetimes. Uh, it would be, I think. You could have a before Elm and after, but a after would have to not include the Elm. Have you seen those Golang optimizations where you have to make a slice or it can't figure out the loop invariance? Really? No, I haven't. I haven't played around with like loop. Uh, uh, sorry, Go code gen to see like what their code gen is like. Um. Um, I think, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do, chat. We're going to, we're going to, we've got some cute plans here. Um, we're going to say true here. G Vec array trunks gives you an iterator over n items. Ooh. Okay, we got a Twitter link. Discards in Go can be used as a compiler optimiz as compiler optimization hints. Whoa! What? What? Oh, that makes sense. Because you do the initial length check first. I, I can actually see where that would make sense. That's really strange. Um...
Um, it should be able to promote the length check into its own. I kind of agree that that requires that you like move the bounds check. Uh, you move the bounds of the for loop into like a dominator, which is actually an optimization optimization that I kind of plan to do. Also slices. I shit. Loop optimizations in Go can be surprising. Yeah, that makes sense. It's the same thing. It's doing the same bounds check. Yeah, I, I guess it... Huh. Huh. Yeah, you're explicitly moving it into the dominator, and then it is able to determine that it never iterates past that point, which is interesting. If you have iterators, do you get the same performance, or are there not iterators in Go? Um, values. Values, this is on self.values. So what we're going to do is we're going to push a true if it's on the right side, and we're going to push a false if it's on the left-hand side. Uh, we'll pull in those instructions, too. Uh, 40, ref x. Begs the question of uh, why can't it do that for regular uh, regular counted loop? Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, I feel like that would be as simple as just moving the the bounds check outside of the loop. Um, I'm trying to think how complex that is. You have to recognize it's a deref off of a variable, which isn't too bad. Um, that's gonna do a copy. Oh, yikes! Yikes! I thought I lost it for a second. Yeah, I'm I'm not 100% sure how hard that would be to do. Really? Rust is destructuring that correctly here? Is under equals AS hiding an error that would bound, uh, bounce check would trigger? Not really. It, it's me. Well, yes, it is checking the most extreme access that it can do. And that's what I think uh, is happening there. It's doing some optimization where basically it's it's accessing the furthest value and then it's able to reason about the fact that the loop doesn't go deeper than that and omit future or subsequent bounds checks on that access, which is really interesting. Um. Oh, this is actually in this loop. Okay. Whoops. Uh, yeah. The compiler knows that if you make it past that without a panic, any small range will not panic. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a subset. All future index indices are a subset. Um, oh, I need to match on that, and I also need to match on this one. Okay. So there we push the metadata. And then here, I want to figure out if I want to index this by the aisle register or not. And I think I do. Mm. Um. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think I'm going to get sushi for dinner. Fuck yeah, chat. Trying to plan out dinner. Sorry, I'm, I'm like, slightly distracted. I've got, like, three conversations going on. Um, I'm not sure this should be advertised as an optimization hint. It just seems like a missed optimization. Yes, that's what it is. But in a lot of situations, there's just going to be things that are missed in the optimizer, and you sometimes have to coerce it into knowing what to do correctly. Like, yes, it should understand the constraints of that loop, especially if it is able to reason about the fact that the constraints of the loop are strictly a subset of the last element access outside of the loop. It is so goddamn close to optimizing it. That I feel like that's a close one, but I would say like a lot of the times when I'm optimizing things, I am writing things in a way that are easy for the compiler to understand, and that is a common thing. 
I know in Rust, I did that with asserts relatively early on, where I would do stuff like that. Um, and this is supposed to be add on sub. Not that it really matters yet, because we're still uh, structuring this metadata. And I think what we want to do is we want the metadata to actually be... Um, I think we want the metadata to be indexed by the... Uh, register index? Yeah, so I think what we'll do is we'll have metadata here. We'll do metadata.clear, and we'll do metadata.resize. And then we should be able to do self. Uh, whatever we have the next register. So this is on graph. We have next reg. Okay. Uh, next register, none. Okay, so metadata this. Um, resize that, and then this is, uh, that's a reg index, which I think supports as u size. No, do we have to do a uh, two u size? Do we have a two u size on reg index? No, we don't. We actually removed that. I'll source, uh, target, no, it's not target reg. Um... Oh, it's as you size. Okay, yeah, it is a reg index. Chat, I might have had too much wine. I might have had too much wine, chat. Okay, so this is um, mark all uh, register inputs as unknown sources. You wine too much. Yeah. So here we'll do metadata. Uh, reg O, the output register as you size. Shut up, chat. I'm not drunk. Um, <laughs> is equal to sum true of M. Or maybe this is just the instruction index. I'm not 100% sure if I want to have that extra DREF since I already have DREF the instruction. And that's a uh, dot zero. You whine too much. Um, okay. So what we have is based on the output register of this instruction, we then say that there's an immediate input to this uh, to this instruction that we can use in future optimization passes. And then we accumulate this after the optimizations, which is relatively cheap. We have an O register allocation mem set on here, which isn't too bad. Are you as invested in TBC min maxing as you were in classic? Honestly, no. I've been a little burnt out from classic, unfortunately. I'm not 100% sure why. Um. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm like a little burnt out from WoW right now, which is okay because I've been really enjoying just, I don't know, doing some streams, writing some code. I've been pretty burnt out from code, so now that I'm back into writing some code, I'm really happy. I stopped playing TBC. My roommate just used my uh, Warlock to boost. Yeah. TBC is my favorite expansion, but a lot of the momentum seems to have been lost, which I'm kind of surprised, of, but like a lot of people have been quitting. I don't know. Um, for each pass and passes, after the pass, we get the instruction that was just optimized, and then we look up the, uh, we map the output register of that instruction, only if it's an output register, which makes sense if it got optimized to immediate, uh, or I guess that will never happen, if it got optimized, um, yeah, I think this is fine. Why play WoW when you have fixive? I don't know. So do we want to do this optimization and simplify it, or do we want to have a post, a post pass? We're definitely redoing work here. Let's just get, let's just get this to work. And once this works, we'll then optimize it. Um, Actually, we don't have to do that in a future pass. Oh, this is really interesting. I actually like this model quite a bit. Uh, so to simplify, we need to pass in the uh, the simp structure. 
which is a, a mutable reference to things that are indexed in a vector and they contain an option which has a bool and an immediate. And I think what we want to do is have an operation variant as well. I actually love playing uh, Final Fantasy XI back in the day. I haven't tried out fourteen uh, since the uh, fifth launch before Realm Reborn. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I've never tried Final Fantasy. Is it good? Like, I know people swear by it, and they say it's, like, a really good thing, but I, I don't know. I haven't really seen it. Um... The PvE is really enjoyable. Ooh. Interesting. I always think games like that have shitty PvE for some reason. I just assume by default that they have shitty PvE. Uh, I'm dying now. Dude, why is T-Swift so fucking good, chat? Like, I know people try to be woke and say that they don't care about Taylor Swift and blah, blah, blah. She's overrated. But you're just fucking wrong. You're just wrong. She's fucking phenomenal. Nah. I left, but I'm back. Welcome back, Rastafarian. Rastafarian. Hell yeah, that's a fucking dope-ass name. Highly appreciate it. It's killing me, yes. Uh, What's going on here? Why am I having problems? Oh, because I didn't do it down here, too. I'm all about free Britney. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Brittany needs to need Brittany needs to be able to get out there on her own. Um <laughs> expected you size found whoa. Oh, these are woes. Are you talking about the Twitter infosec <laughs> user Taylor Swift? The actual Taylor Swift. Now, that being said, how do you know they're different people? You don't. Exactly. Okay, so now we pass that stuff into simp. So what we can do is if we have a simp, um, I think what we need to do, we have encoded the information of whether it's left-hand side or right-hand side. We cache the immediate so we don't have to re-resolve it. And then, did I hear anything about Britney Spears? What's the bool? The bool is whether it's left-hand side or right-hand side, which, uh, there you go. Uh, it indicates right-hand side, right? So if it's true, the immediate is on the right-hand side. If it's false, then the immediate is on the left-hand side, which is necessary. Uh, it's necessary when we do ads and subs. I'm always lost watching you, but it's still interesting. Yeah, I'm a little lost too, because I'm a little drunk right now. So, yeah, I wasn't expecting two glasses of wine to fuck me up this bad. But, uh, 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 but here we are. Here we are, chat. Um, but here we are. Have you eaten? I had a small breakfast. <laughs> I had a small breakfast. Uh, I had two small glasses of whiskey and I'm a bit smashed. Hell yeah, dude. Holy shit. Um, let me see here. Go up there. Um... Um, drunk text old boss. Dude, my old boss, literally when I told him I'm quitting, he was like, yep, we knew that was gonna fucking happen. We knew that four years ago. <laughs> like, they were not surprised at all. Literally fucking laughed. Drunk text someone? Nah, that's not, that's not really my cup of tea. Um... Pretty sure American beer is pretty strong if you take into consideration the sheer fuck ton of IPA breweries we have now. Yeah, dude, I've seen a lot of 8 or 9% beers. I'm not a beer person, but they're fucking everywhere, which is absolutely insane. Um, Why did he see that coming? Because I told him 
I told him literally within the first week of joining that I have to quit into four years due to the pay schedule. <laughs> like, and I told his boss's boss and his boss's boss's boss. Literally everyone fucking knew I was gone. Oh yeah, today was technically the last day of my two weeks. So, uh, woo. Woo. <laughs> we did it. What's that? Pay schedule? Pay schedule. Sorry, not pace. Yeah, my bad. My bad. I'm throwing on speech. <laughs> um. Uh, get a job, you degenerate! When did we get to see you in DC? I was in DC for fucking eight years. Did you actually work in the last two weeks? Chat. Did I work in my last two years? <laughs> okay, back to coding. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so we're going to take a look at uh, <laughs> Ben's streaming for a week. Chat's hard work. Hell yeah, chat's hard work. Chat is so fucking high, high maintenance. Damn, son. Jobs are overrated. Wood cabin stream when? Ooh, I might be going to a wood cabin pretty soon here. How did you get away with it? Give us tips. Um, be about as productive as most people are in a year and a couple weeks, and then just do a couple random projects. Uh, other than that, have a boss that does it. Yeah, it might be time for more wine. Holy shit, the carrots up with the $300 donation. I guess we're getting a freedom phone, chat. I guess we're getting a fucking freedom phone. Holy shit. Um. Well. We're going to have to figure out how to get a freedom phone. But we're going to get a fucking freedom phone. Holy shit. Thank you so much. Holy shit. Was not expecting that. Um, Yeah, what do I need to do? How do I simp out now? How, how do I how do I simp out, chat? What 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 do I need to do? Freedom phone content. Yep, we're definitely going to get some freedom phone content. Holy shit. Thank you so much. Fuck. <laughs> Welp. <laughs> there you go, godling. Well, drink more than you should. I guess we're getting drunk today, chat. We're not getting drunk. We are responsibly drinking. Oh my god, we're gonna be fucking looking at a freedom phone. I'm actually so excited. Today I'm announcing the freedom phone. This is the first major push back on the big tech companies that attacked us. Oh my god. It has its own app store. It has its own app store. <laughs> Guess this happens when you're getting drunk. I we haven't written too much code today. Wow, bit mitigate. What is this? Um Buy it live on stream. I have to enter in my, like, routing number. They only take banking information. But we're gonna fucking buy it, chat. We're gonna buy a freedom phone. <laughs> the world's youngest Bitcoin millionaire made the freedom phone? Yup. I mean, that's what he claims, right? That's what he fucking claims. Ships in August? Yeah, we're getting a... A freedom, uh, credit card is not freedom me enough? No, it's not. August is near. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy that. Uh, basically, when the stream wraps up, let's uh, let's get this optimization pass working. Um, <laughs> my birthday is August third. Are we gonna celebrate your birth birthday, Rastafarian?
Um. Um, sorry, chat. I'm trying to have a social life. I'm trying to organize dinner tonight. Fucking sushi. Sushi and steaks. Um, imagine being born in the scorching heat of the summer. Feel sorry for you guys. Yeah, exactly. Code Trump. Yep, I have a, I have a document where I've been recording all the, like, codes that will uh, get us a discount. But yeah, holy shit. Chat, can we get a thank you? Uh, fuck, I can't fucking pronounce his name. Let me, let, let me, let me see if I can pronounce it this time. Let's get a thank you for Nikaritnikov. Nikaritnikov, chat. Let's get a thanks to everyone for making us reach our freedom phone goal. We're going to be hacking a fucking fabulous phone that... I swear to God, if it's hard and we need to find actual Ode, thanks for supporting my freedom. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Sounds like a name that doesn't love freedom. Yeah, we're going to get a communist phone. Uh, who the fuck needs a social life if you have chat? That's true. But chat isn't going to go out to me, uh, go out with me for sushi tonight. The America phone. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is going to be fucking fantastic. Oh, I can't wait. Makes the, uh, the more O-Day, the better. Yeah, we're going to do a lot of stuff. We'll try and do uh, firmware dumps. We'll try to do a bunch of stuff. Um, we'll try and get it running in an emulator. Uh, we are going to be careful. We're not going to look for an Android O-Day. We're going to be careful to not look for like a crazy O-Day in in a super sensitive surface but if it's in some like shitty knockoff driver or some really shitty app store code we'll uh we'll go at it gru operative pays x microsoft researcher to ode the patriots phone of choice hell yeah oh the other thing um chat was asking about uh, this phone, when we were in the hot tub, and we never actually talked about it. So this is the Android Dev Phone 1. And you know it's an Android Dev Phone 1 because it has this dope-ass back. So this is like the battery cover for it. You know what? We'll go to this mode. There you go. So it has this dope-ass back. Oh, I have to cover my face. The camera's too smart. So this is my Android Dev Phone, phone 1 that I got in high school. Um... It's an HTC, uh, what the fuck? An HTC G1, I want to say. Um, but look at this keyboard. Is this not the best keyboard you've ever fucking seen on a phone? It is a full keyboard with a fucking number row. Right? Yeah, and then the action on this is really cool. It kind of, like, swoops out. It might break because it's slightly disassembled, but it, like, does this where it, like, swoops out. Um, but I have it broken apart because I have to repair this. Sorry, I hit the mic there. Um, so, basically, I had... Um, let me see. I'm going to slightly disassemble this here. Pop this open. Now, if I spoof out the battery, it should work just fine. Um, I know you don't have the best view, chat. Where are my tweezers? Wait, there they are. Um... I just have to disconnect kind of all the peripherals here so I can take this uh, board off. And then it looks like I need a torque screw.
Chad, I hope you weren't here to code today, because, uh, it's not happening. Ooh. Nope. Wrong size. Um. Is it literally just one screw holding that whole thing in? Yes. Yes, it is. All right, so... Um, shit, I reassembled this a lot more than I thought I did. Uh, basically, I had a stepbrother who sat on the phone when I had the headphone connector plugged in, and anyone who had an HTC M1 or is familiar with it, or a G1, sorry, um, knows that there wasn't a headphone connector, you had to use the USB port. So I had headphones plugged in, and then he sat on it, um, which then meant, uh, let's see, I think I'm missing a screw somewhere. Maybe not. Maybe? Maybe? Watch as I disassemble a phone. And I know you don't have the best view. You just can see my face, but that's okay. That's all you need. Okay. Okay. Oof. Oof. This phone's actually not too hard to work on. Hat view, best view. Have you bought the Freedom hardware? No, I'm going to order it now tonight. I just got fucking attacked. <laughs> I just got attacked. Okay, there we go. So, this is the board that, sorry, I had to do like four screws for this. Focus, you fuck. This is, it really doesn't like it there. This is the board that contains the SD card, but also the USB jack. You can see the USB jack was completely destroyed, and it also ripped a couple pads off there. And then I probably tried to repair it, and that also further broke it. So what I really need to do is go in here and figure out where these traces go to and get a, a USB port on here. Because right now I can't charge the phone or do anything. But uh, it's a factory unlocked Android 1.6 phone where you can uh, basically modify or patch anything in the device, which is really fucking cool. Um, factory rooted, factory unlocked. It's literally designed for developing Android apps, and this is the first one that ever came out. So, that is another project that we could do on stream at some point in the future. But yeah, I would really like to repair that phone because I love it. I absolutely love that phone. Sorry, I'm moving all the fucking, <laughs> moving all the stuffed animals away. Um, I like the little trackball in the past on these things. Yeah, I kind of agree as well. The trackballs actually worked okay for, uh, for navigation. Uh, what if we accidentally found an, uh, an Android Ode in the Freedom Phone? Yeah, we can, we can make that happen. Um, we, we, we could maybe accidentally find that. The phone, it lacks freedom. Uh, that's what the end stream foot pedal is for. Ooh. All right. Ha, uh, Nikaritnov is getting us fucking drunk. Uh, Nikarit, ha, Nikaritnikov. There we go. I need to take a class on Russian. How hard is it to learn Russian if you know English and Spanish? How big of a leap is it? I know I could learn the pronunciation of like Cyrillic things, but it'd probably take a while. If you know Linux well, would Android be easy to jump into? Kind of. They, they did some pretty dramatic changes to like 
Android relies a lot on the binder service, which is their IPC layer, which is how they kind of communicate everything. They also have like a system server that kind of forks everything from it. It's relatively radically different from Linux. I mean, of course, it's a Linux kernel at the end of the day. So if you have a true Linux ODA, you're fine. Um, but the thing is, there's uh, no reason to learn it. What do you mean? You're telling me Russia isn't going to take over the entire world? We're not going to have the WSSR, the, the World States so Soviet Republic? <laughs> my, brother, my brother learned Russian. It's very hard. Yeah, my close friend in, uh, in high school actually uh, majored in uh, Russian literature. So she, like, learned Russian super fluently, which actually sounded interesting because she was able to read a lot of, the, like, the legendary Russian books, um, which is kind of cool. Probably not, but who knows, yeah. But the good thing is that there's no reason, yeah. I don't know, you know, you never know. Russia has nukes, so, you know. You know, I, can, I guess I can turn off the, the uh, sub menu now. All right. So we track this metadata, we track what's on the left side, we track the immediate because we've already ripped that information out. And then what I think we want to do is I think we want to make an enum that indicates the operation. And this is gonna be like an add or a sub and uh, we're just gonna comment this temporarily. Chat, we're gonna, we're gonna put comments in there correctly later. Oh, we got some Chinese in here. Uh, tried via Duolingo, but you need to be persistent, uh, both Mandarin and Russian. Wow, you're really hedging against all the world superpowers taking over, aren't you? English, Mandarin, and Russian? You're pretty much set for life. <laughs> am I right or am I right? <laughs> this is... Um... You passed in the vec with woe and wanted to do something with it? Yeah, I passed in the immediate with woe. And that's because uh, resolving a value is not free. Don't underestimate the Germans. Hmm. I could do this. No one cares about Brazil? We aren't learning Portuguese? What? Portuguese is pretty good. Um, I learned a little bit from my tibia days. India's superpower by 2024? That would be fucking amazing, but unfortunately what's gonna happen is everything that usually got outsourced to China is gonna get outsourced to Russia. Or, sorry, uh, to India. So India is basically gonna be China for the next 10 or 15 years, and then hopefully they have a big industrial boom as well. Um... Portuguese also sounds like Russian, really. I don't know if I've heard uh, Portuguese spoken. So I could actually match... I could bind the instruction here. Um, since the instruction is copy, I can actually just pass in the instruction and then get rid of this enum. It's technically... It's technically more memory, but it might be cheaper since we're just uh, doing a copy of an existing value. So then in these, we have to go to these. Uh, this is going to take an instruction. Um, same with this. I don't know. To me, it sounds very different than Spanish. To me, like, I've never heard it uh, spoken. But in terms of communicated, like, in online on Tibia, Spanish got me most of the way there. Um, instruction needs a... Uh, TR and ref index. Ooh. Uh, since we already read that instruction, there's really no reason for us to actually pass the index. We can pass the index, but I think making a copy of the instruction is actually going to be cheaper in this very specific case. Oh my god, we barely fit in 80 lines there. And once again, we're probably going to restructure the way that we design this code um, as we move on, as it's uh, kind of tricky here. So we pass in a reference to that. Okay, so then in simplify, what we're able to do is let's say we have an add. Um, 
Holy shit, chat. Nikarit Natav has got me fucking drunk, and sorry for butchering your name every time. You got me drunk, you got me on my third glass of wine. Uh, for an English native speaker, all romance languages sound the same. I kind of agree. Um, you played Tibia? What level did you get to? I got to, like, level 104 in Tibia. I played back in 7.4 is when I started, and then I quit at 7.6, joined again at 8.0, and then kind of quit again, and then my brother and I played in, like, some 10.x, and we got to level 100 for the first time. Um, have to go now, watch the vo uh, VOD later. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you so much for the big donation. Can we get more thank yous for Nikaritnikov Nik for basically getting us set up with a Freedom Phone? Thank you so much. You're fucking wonderful. We actually have a great chat here. Even though we should talk each other back and forth, I think we have a pretty good thing going. Um... This is one of the most toxic communities on Twitch. Chat is good because Desu is in presence. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> I love how we have like people in the community who are kind of known in the community. They're known for, uh, you know, things and stuff. All right, we're going to match only on ads. And then if, we've, if we have... Fuck you, chat! Yikes! Desu's all right. Desu's fucking amazing. We love Desu here. Desu's a piece of shit, but we love Desu. We love them. We love them. They're awesome. All right, so let's take a look at this. So we have an ad of 5 and 5. And we want to collapse that to an ad with 10. And I think we now have the information to do that. We have an ad with a register on the right side. We have an immediate on the left side. And now what we have to do is, in this situation, um, then we can do an ad here, which is everything else except for minimum. If it's a zero, then we just delete it. In this situation, we do this if I don't know we could do this as a different match all my homies love Desu yeah Desu's bae even though we hate Desu here uh Desu's okay um Mm. Avoid Desu at all costs. We really did rip on Desu the other day, didn't we? So in this case, we have an ad, but we also need to do this only if... We know which one is a register. If simp... <laughs> if simp... Reg I zero as U size. You can't do if let here, can you? I think I might do mm, simp not si not simo. I can't do if let. Let's just do this for now. We should hit this panic. Oh my god, we hit the panic. Um Hmm. God, T Swift is so fucking good, chat. 
What was the last concert people have been to? Is the fr uh, Freedom Phone available for order? Uh, it will. It's available for order, but it won't ship until August. And who knows? It's probably just a fucking scam. If there is a simp. I'm just going to do this. Match simp reg i.0. Then we're going to say if we have a sum, and that sum is a, um, it doesn't matter if it's right or left hand side. Um, Prev the previous immediate value, and then we also have a um right now it doesn't matter what we match on. If it's this, everything else we do nothing. In this situation, we now know that actually let's just simplify this even more. We'll just say this is an add. So uh this is x equals um, or y equals x plus m, and then z is equal to y plus, um, another immediate. So in this situation, um, or z equals m plus y. So these are the two situations that are covered by this optimization. And then we need to... We need to set instruction is equal to an instruction add of x. Sounds like it, yeah, you duff. Oh, did that shit so fast? Well, it's hard to say. It could be an absolute clusterfuck, but it also could be close to like a Nexus phone and, and having very few bugs. Then we have an output reference, which is the current output ref. We have a ref O. We have the original reference. The original reference which is the original input. And then here we can do M wrapping add Y. Uh, sorry, not Y, uh, Previm. So this will simplify all of these conditions, but it's not gonna work. Reg O. Expected a ref? Found a reg? Oh, this is refo. Sorry. Um, and then that's a ref. And then... Um... Expected a ref found that. Ah, so we have to convert that reference into a value. So we have to do a value allocation here. Um... Values.intoref. Fuck, we don't have that passed in. Oh, we do! Okay. It's gross. But we're learning how we want to architect this. We want to unwrap the into ref and then we want to terminate the add. And this is correct. Woo! Um, uh, I guess it's values. Uh, just push. Push this 
I know chat will f will reformat as we find necessary. Uh, push cannot fail. Okay. Oh, never mind. Push can fail. Chat, we're almost there. I swear. <laughs> Fuck! Uh, as you size. <laughs> oh my god! It worked! It fucking worked! We have to update the, uh... We have to update the fucking... Reg uses? Okay, so we're replacing our current instruction. So the dependency is on... Um... The reg use mute of the output of this? No, the input. But then we move it. Um, wait a minute. How much are we changing register usage? We're incrementing the register usage of that and decrementing of that. Okay, okay, okay. So the register usage of OR is uh, decreasing by one and the registered usage of, so that's the original. No, that's going up by one. So we're depending on the input to the previous add by one. Um, and then we're decrementing the usage of the output of the current. And so this is ref O. Uh, sorry, this is rego. So we're not using the output of our thing. And this is OR. Is it expecting a reg? I have to resolve that. Hopefully you find a good ex abstraction for the usage stuff. Yeah. Um, we're gonna we're gonna find something. We're basically gonna get this to work and then we're gonna find the correct um X. That's the instruction, and then we're going to have an immediate, and then we're going to have the uh, reg i. Because we don't want to call a lookup again if we don't have to, uh, which means that this needs to take another uh, reg, uh, reg index. Yeah, we're going to figure out the structure that we want to use for this. Uh, 16 reg is not fun on the scope. Uh, that's okay. We can pull that in. Uh, use crate reg. Chat, I'm sorry that I'm going a little slower than usual here. Had a little bit more to drink than I expected. <laughs> um, 86 OR. And then OR... We have uh, OR here. Uh, we'll just say ORR. It, it's gross. We'll find new names and new structures here. Uh, we just need to get this working. Some. Uh, up to 55. Oh. Um, these both... Uh, before the instruction itself, these need to take... This needs to take reg i, and this needs to take reg i. Yeah, I put it in the wrong spot. Thank you, Joey. Okay, well, that's wrong. Um, The output of this is used... No. This is actually reg i. Ooh, 
Why is it called simp? It's the simplification structure. There we go. Chat! We did it! We did it! Oh my god, did my camera just overheat? I think my camera overheated, chat. Yeah. It's because it's fucking 90 degrees inside. It's probably going to keep fighting us. Fans, yeah, I might have to put a fan on it. Otherwise, we'll just lose our uh, we'll just lose our webcam for a minute, which kind of sucks cuz I know you want to see my cute face. ILR22 is AX and then we take AX, so we decrement the usage of the input to this instruction and then we increment the usage of the original input because then we short circuit it. Um, uh, and then we need to return true here. Uh, return that we actually performed a remapping. So check this out, chat. Now, if we go down here and we say this, where we add a bunch of fives together, this should simplify. Yes! 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 And we did that cheaply. And since... Uh, Self.instructions. Uh, drain filter inst. Um, almost spilled my wine there. Now we can get rid of this, I think. Um, for pass and passes, perform all the passes, we're on an instruction, and then if the instruction became a NOP, if it is a NOP, then uh, we filter it. Um... Uh, ooh, if we do that, we need to change simp. No, wait, we don't. Simp is indexed by register index, and we don't re... We don't change registers. So, we can do this. We're trying to simplify this now. Now we're actually trying to make a better structure. I'm so lost here, but always fun. I'm glad you're having fun. Definitely some weird shit we're doing here. Um... I promise we have an end result. Uh, that can go away. Come on. Come on, chat. Come on, chat. Inst. Uh, let's deref that. Yes! Yes! Fucking easy! Now we don't have that uh, second loop. This is just ON. And then this will... Um... That's so fucking cool. Does it handle overflow correctly? Of course. If we do not zero, this will be 119. Or one, uh, yeah, 114. Yeah, that's correct, because we got rid of one of the fives. Wow. Wow. Yeah, we're doing, like, a symbolic optimization right now of basically if you have ads that are chained together, it sums the ads up. And this should work in the other direction as well. If we put a T here, this should also work. Oh, nope, that didn't work. And you can see where that fail. Ooh. Uh, well, that's very wrong, chat. Um, yeah, that's very wrong. Uh, 
Five plus ten. Whoops. Yes, indeed. Whoops. Um, we have an add, and the source of the single input to this add. Oh. Yeah, we can't do this. Um, this just needs to be included in here. And then we're fine, chat. We're fine. Chat, relax. It's a fucking minor setback, chat. You don't have to get so upset. Um... Is he reading another chat? <laughs> Did he use the bool? Uh, for this one, I haven't because I know it's an ad. My guitar. So we have um, original uh, reg and original ref. Chat, relax. Original register and then we have the original ref here and then this is done. Fuck! Um, and I want to do ref followed by reg, because that's the standard that we've been using. Reg index and ref index. Um, ref, we've been doing refs first. So we're just going to keep that consistent by changing that. Then we have to go to opt, where we have to change this to ref reg. Well, we had it there. Uh, and then ref i and reg i. Okay, and then we go to 83. O reg, it's not happy about that. Yes, O ref, O reg. Yes! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Fuck yes, chat. What language is this? This is Rust. Nah, he just hates us. Yeah, fuck you, Zarsek. <laughs> um, so I've never written an IR, but is the window for constant prop uh, just each basic block until some dependency? No, so when you're writing an IL, um, typically you'll you'll understand the dominators, which are Basically, a, a dominator is a um, a dominator is a block that you must go through to reach another block. So the way that works is like, let's say you have, come on, why is that? Uh, what's going on here? Why is scroll wheel not working? There we go. Okay, so the way that that works is if you have a and you have, uh, let's say, B, and you have C, and then C goes to, uh, yeah. So basically, a dominator is a, a block which you must go through. So in this case, C has A as a dominator, and B also has A as a dominator, because it is impossible to reach B without going through A. Right, and same here, it's impossible to reach C without going through A in this specific graph. So what you'll typically do is uh, you have this concept of dominators and you also have a concept of post dominators. So a post dominator is something that you must go through. So in this case, like C uh, has a post dominator of D, but if you were to have some like divergent flow, I think a good example here is that A, has a post dominator of D, but B nor C post dominate A because it's not guaranteed that you go through one or the other of them, right? So typically what you'll do is you'll understand what things you had to have run through and what things you have to run through in the future from where you currently are in execution, and then you can optimize through there. So an example is if this sets an immediate equal to zero, and then this does like five plus zero, which makes no sense. You know that you can reuse the zero from up here, down here, because it is impossible for this to not be initialized once you get to C. 
but you cannot necessarily do that in uh in d let's say b sets x equals five d cannot use x because x does not come from a dominator it's guaranteed that either you go through one or the other yeah so then you have the concept of phi nodes which is some like mathematical symbol which then allows you to make this where uh let's say this sets x is equal to six um then you can have a phi node down here where you say that x is equal to either the result here which is six or it's equal to five so phi nodes allow you to kind of union the possible paths that you took um so it's like a parent but also implying that there aren't other parents that's not true so uh in this case like a is an immediate dominator but you could also have another block let's say f that goes into this block and in this case uh f dominates a and it also immediately dominates a so an immediate dominator is the the closest block that you have to go through right um so dominators go all the way yes they go all the way to the root and immediate dominators are typically the start now the way these are typically structured in memory is you just have a chain of imdoms right so if you're d and you know a is an imdom of that and then f is an imdom of that you kind of build this chain which then allows you to just go through here rather than actually having a list for every single block of all the dominators and allows you to like potentially change this graph where now like maybe h is a dominator and this will just walk this path and traverse this and realize that that's the correct way um that's kind of the basics of of uh of graphs or, or more specifically aisles that being said i don't understand aisles at all like i i just kind of write them how i feel like they should yeah a phi node is basically a union if something is universally set between nodes. Um, and a phi node, when it comes to like register scheduling, is just an alias. So if two nodes both set a variable to five or six, and then a, a, a post dominator node sets that value into a different one, then you can actually just use the same register scheduler, and then a phi node just gets deleted. So at the end of the day, when it comes to actually jitting, a phi node is really just uh you alias the register in different blocks yeah my my camera's overheating i'm sorry about that we'll just go without a camera for a little bit here sorry um that's what happens when it's fucking hot and the sun's blasting us um you might have to insert moves into blocks yes yeah there's there's things you can also do like the optimization that was brought up by itzen before was basically about like whether or not um like in go it didn't see that the loop iterated for a certain amount the way that that would typically be handled in an il is you mo move part of the loop calculation into the dominator of the loop and then you resolve that in the dominator rather than actually in the like subsequent blocks so it, it's kind of interesting but uh yeah Anyways, that's a, a little bit onto kind of ILs and uh, SSA form. Um, that being said, I have no formal background in SSA form. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. So it, it's literally, I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go. Uh, are you ever going to shuffle things from one block to another or merge blocks? Um, if I was trying to optimize like that, yes. In reality, in this situation... I am striving more for constant propagation in that I might not want to pay that cost. So in reality, yes, when you're writing a compiler or like a, a static um, a static transform, you want to do things like that. But in this specific situation, I might not do it because I'm okay with the increased cost because I'm going to focus more on the speed of jitting such that i can be more aggressive with the values that i constant propagate so it's very complex um it, this what i'm doing is not standard you, you wouldn't find a class or anything talking about what i'm doing i am doing something very unique that's designed for snapshot fuzzing uh so does the optimization work if there are uh knobs in between yes absolutely 
Uh, in this case, this will actually propagate constants between blocks, but it's not going to... Um, I'm treating blocks... Basically, if you're doing optimizations across blocks, you need to reason about where things can potentially reach. With SSA, since there's a single source of a register, you're able to do optimizations from previous blocks, and specifically, if an SSA register is used as an input, you know that it comes from a dominator block because it's impossible to construct SSA where it's not from a dominator. But when it comes to register reads and register writes, that's what allows me to get rid of fee nodes. And since I'm not using fee nodes, I have those register reads and writes, and I won't propagate those across block boundaries. But a lot of things actually will still propagate across block boundaries in this IELTS case. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting in that regard. Uh, so we have an instruction add. So this is basically, if we have an add instruction and we had a previous add where it had an immediate on either side, then we do this. Now what we can do is we can pair up an add with a sub. Um, and I just want to see how much uh, code we're reproducing here. If we have an add and the previous instruction was a sub, then... How does this work, chat? We actually care about right-hand side or left-hand side. So if it is on the right-hand side of a sub, so this specific situation is x minus, uh, x minus m, and then um, y equals this, and then z equals uh, y uh, plus m. So this will only trigger if there's an immediate on the right-hand side of the add and an immediate on the right-hand side of the sub, which will then become x uh, plus m. And what is this? Um, specifically, this is uh, prevm. So what do I do here? I'm really bad at math chat and I'm drunk as fuck. Uh, I think we do prev m sub m. So it's x, it's x plus uh, prev m minus m. Is that correct chat? So in this case, we're gonna use the output of the previous instruction and then we're gonna have the previous, uh, yeah, previous immediates. And then we're going to wrapping sub the immediates. Okay. Um, ooh. Uh, sorry, this is true. So if the immediate is on the right-hand side of the sub, then this is the math that we do. And what we should be able to do is let t equals il.sub t and 5. And that should basically collapse that. Ooh. Uh, we have, oh, this has to be chained this way. Uh-oh. 45 minus 5 and then 46 plus 5. So we have an add instruction that had a previous instruction that, oh, oh, we need to add that down here. It needs to be done here. Uh, or sub. Bam! There we go. Now it should work. Fuck! Oh, the match add and add. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right, chat. So smart. Why is chat so fucking smart sometimes? Chat's just so goddamn smart. And then this. Already said that five minutes ago. Yeah, well, I wasn't reading chat. Okay, there we go. Is that correct? 114 to 109. Yeah. Chat with a collective IQ of 106. Holy shit. So then if we have a sub 5 and T, this will not work, right? And that won't work because we need to write the uh, we need to write the variance of this where it also handles this side. 
uh, where the sub is on the RHS or the LHS, in which case it's this is what we're looking at. Uh, M minus X. Um, in which case, so this is X plus M or X minus M and then uh, Y plus M, uh, prev M. Same thing. Uh, actually, this is prev M. Sorry. Prev M. So in this case, we resolve that to uh, M. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that's RHS. This is LHS. So we simplify this as Z is equal to this plus M. And what does that turn into? How do we do this, chat? Uh, how do I algebraically simplify this? Oh, it's just uh, prev m plus m minus x. Is that correct, chat? Is that the correct simplification of this? I think so. I think I know how to do basic algebra. So this is what we start off with. And that is equivalent to, uh, I like to do this negative x, in which case we can do this, in which case we can do uh, m plus m, and then minus x. Right? Right, chat? So then we'll do a wrapping add of prevenim m, and then we'll do a ref, uh, ref i. Subs are not com uh, commutative, right? Subs are not. Adds are, but subs aren't. And that's why the add doesn't care about whether the previous is on the left or the right side, but the sub actually does care. It is communicative, uh, communicative if we turn it all into, um, into adds with nots, but we don't have any or er, negates, but we don't have any negates in our IL. Uh, this code is ugly, and we're gonna we're gonna deduplicate this code as as we see fit. Communicative? Yeah, fuck you! I don't understand math. Um, we have an add. We have an add here. Um. What do we do wrong, chat? Math is communism, brother. What did we do wrong here, chat? Um, aggressively apply macro rules. Yeah, we'll be doing that. So sub is not communist, but add is correct. That's because 5 minus x is is different than x minus 5, but x plus 5 is the same as 5 plus x. The indentation level? Yeah, I know the indentation level is fucked. Uh, we add ref o, so replacing this output. We then... This is on that side. We add the previms together. I don't understand what's wrong with that. That's RHS. The sub had to be RHS. This sub is not RHS. Oh, this is a sub. Oh, yeah, and then we don't collapse subs. 10 minus 47. Ooh. Uh, ref I? What's wrong with this? Why are we getting a reference to an IL register that doesn't exist? 22 plus 109, then 45 minus 5, and then 10 minus 47. And that's the ref input. Oh, this is the old input.
This is correct now, chat. Now, we won't optimize when we have a sub as the input, so we'll still have a sub in here, but this should now be correct. Uh, 45 minus 5, and then 10 minus 46. Um... I don't know how I do this with a, without a bunch of matches. Okay. This will now be wrong. Um... Does in the code. How do we want to do this chat? How do we want to simplify this code? We can make this a macro where we transform. We have an old input. We have we have a new input, an old input, an old ref. Um. God damn. Toss in the code. So now we have to find a good way to structure this code. We did the optimization chat. So let's be excited. Can we get some pogs in, ch in chat for the fact that we actually figured out what the fuck we're doing for the first time in our lives? Let me find some music. Some pop. God damn it, but, but oh. all right, let's see if I can say this. But, but gently, Kazni. Begilent Kesni. Begilent Kesni? Can anyone else see this? What is this? Is this porn? Oh, fuck, you can't see my reactions. I was trying to have a reaction. Shit. Let me get up, fam. One second, be right back.
All right, how loud is the fan, chat? How loud is the fan? Let me turn up my clip. Okay, should be clipping out the fan. I put the fan uh, specifically on that. We're back. All right. Fuck yeah, this is a reaction stream now? Hell yeah. Hopefully the fan isn't a problem. That fan will probably be a little bit loud. I, I hope it's not too bad. I'll try to... Can't hear it? Really? It's like fucking blasting. It's zero loud? Wow. That, thanks to my fucking 286S. Holy shit. Uh, Anonymous, thank you so much for the two months of subscription. Hell yeah. Wait, he's bald? No! No, I'm not bald. Oh, and I just screamed there, and you probably didn't hear that, because I have a con uh, compressor now. So now I can scream into the mic or something like, FUCK! And hopefully that didn't destroy your ears. Right? Right? Did that work? Did that correctly work? <sighs> DB begin on point. That compressor is godly, right? Right? Like, even if I'm over here and I'm, like, pretty quiet, you're probably still getting a decent signal. Completely transparent? Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, dude. We got a pretty good setup now. It do be compressing. It worked great. Oh. Hell yeah, chat. Hell yeah. I give you a wink. I'm thinking of saving, shaving my head soon. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta do it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> mm, sorry, I'm drunk texting people. Uh, already lost enough of my hair. <laughs> Ripped the bandaid off. Yeah, welcome to my fucking life, chat. Sometimes you just get it. B uh, <sighs> Bejilent Kesney. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Hell yeah, don't forget, chat, you have Twitch Primes available for Subarinos. <sighs> okay. Um, current instruction is... Um, either, uh, X plus M, y, uh, X minus M. Uh, this is previous instruction is equal to X, uh, Z minus M. Okay, and then this is M minus Z. Z, sorry for you fucking communists out there who say Z. Uh, since I still work most of this stream, how you drink? Uh, this is my third glass of wine, but they're pretty weak glasses. But I haven't eaten too much. So, you know. Definitely not more than five. No, this is my third glass. I keep count. That's one thing I learned from the Russians. When I lived with the Russians, they taught me uh, stop drinking when you've lost count. Okay, and then this is either side. Uh, Z minus M. Uh, so this is Prev. Whoa. Prev. Z minus Prev M. This is uh, Prev M minus Z. You're not GubHub sponsored as streamer? What? What do you mean I'm not GubHub sponsored? Uh, Prev is Previn plus Z or Prev. 
Uh, Z plus Trevin. That's why you need to clone bottles instead. Grubhub? Do you think I've ever ordered Grubhub to my house? Um, the fuck is Grubhub? Grubhub is uh, a U.S. Uh, phone mobile app that lets you like buy uh, buy food. Okay, so now we need to do the same thing, but down here for if the M is on the left hand side. Whoa. Wow, the uh, fan is uh, not balanced and it's shaking and vibrating my desk. I'm going to put this adder sub kind of at the end here. So if it's an adder sub and it doesn't match any of the previous simplifications, then we go down here. Current instruction is either m uh, plus x or m minus x. And then what we do here is we have z, in this case, m plus x. Uh, and then this is, um, shit. The poor man's Uber Eats? It varies. I found that Grubhub, Grubhub typically has better service than uh, Uber Eats, at least where I live. But it, it really varies by where you live. Okay, X is either that. Then if it's a sub, and then here we can say z is equal to these. Let's just get these correct first. Uh, before we move on to this one, where we're fucking wrong. Um, okay. So, when we get to here, z is equal to this. And then here, this will take z previm. Uh, wait. Uh, this is x equals z x equals this um x equals this or x equals this uh or x equals that okay so if the current instruction is an add then um this collapses to M previm sub. So I need to do another match here based on the outside, this outer one. I could potentially just do this. I could do current instruction is this. And then we can simplify it later. Um, so this is now correct. So if z is x plus m then this is equal to x plus m, right? Um, res is equal to x plus m minus prev m, in which case we do m sub uh, prev m, or we do prev m. Is that correct? Um... Result is equal to, so z is equal to x plus m. Uh, and x in this case is actually uh, reg input. And then this is the same reg input plus m minus prev m. No. This is o reg. Yeah, because that's the current instruction. Ah, there we go. Uh, and then this is prev m. So we have the original reg minus previm, then we're doing plus m. So this is this specific optimization. Uh, then we want to take previm and we subtract. Is this even correct? 
Uh, outside instruction. Oh, the previous instruction is a sub. And then we're adding an immediate to that. We have an output register. It's RHS Previm. Um, so then we do an add. So this gets simplified into a res is equal to oreg plus m uh, minus previm. So is this wrong right now? Am I dumb, chat? This is an add with a reg and an m. So we're adding this m. This is the original reg. That was the input. The RHS was the immediate. So we have the output reg here. So then we should end up pushing. Did I do this wrong? I'm just going to delete all of these. We're going to kind of start from here. We don't actually care uh, what this contains. It's just all that matters is that it's a sub. Okay, those aren't getting simplified, of course. That's fine. Um, so what we really want to look at in this specific case, we have a symbolic input that is then subtracted. Uh, these are both RHS, and then we have an add RHS. This should be a zero. Yeah. Wait, why are we doing Previm then? The original register minus Previm. Am I crazy? How do we get that right? And now I feel like we have these flipped. And if I do this, this is going to be like 15 or 10. Sorry. Mm, oh, wait, is that just correct now? Let's just do a seven and nine. Two different numbers here. Okay. AX minus 7, add 9. Yeah, if I do this, this is going to be minus 2. Or, yeah, yeah, that's minus 2. Um, but if I do this, this is actually correct. So I am correct, now that we thought about it. So we have an add on the outside, which is adding an immediate. The previous instruction subtracted an immediate. We then can just reformat that into register plus immediate minus the previous immediate, which is what we're doing here, oreg uh, minus m minus previm. And now this is correct. If we take ax, we subtract 7, and then add 9, that's the same as adding 2 and storing it. Right? We did it? Did we do it, chat? Um, okay, so now we have the same thing, except this time we're going to have uh, a false, which means that the original's RHS is going to be this way, uh, which then means when we simplify this, when we do our algebra, because I'm not very good at algebra anymore. This is the same as prev m plus m minus oreg. Is that true, chat? Is that true, chat? Did we do math correctly there? Uh, this is now a sub. So we add the two m's together and we get that. All right, so this is in the condition where we have a, a seven. Wow, I cannot type. A seven and a T. Here we go. Is that correct? Seven minus T and then T add nine. Is that the same as 16 minus that? <laughs> Chat, why am I so bad at math? 
Um, I think that's correct. So we have uh, uh, the previous instruction is a previn minus oreg, and then we're adding an immediate. And then that is the same as uh, uh, we could get rid of the parentheses here. And this is a plus negative here, which then means, yes, this is correct. Right? Chat, am I correct here? Is chat dead? Chat is very dead. We've gotten to the time where EU has to go to sleep. Hello, Rockstar. How are you doing? Chat is dead. Rip. Now I have to do this math on my own. But I think this is correct. It should be equivalent to this. These two are equivalent, right? <laughs> Trying to figure out what I want to eat for dinner? What's your favorite food of Buff Seagull? What do you like to eat? Um, Oreg is only negative. M plus Previm, and then subtract. What is that, the associative property? I don't fucking know. Chat is drunk as well. Yeah. I'm considering a local ramen place. Yeah, get fucking ramen, dude. Go out, get yourself a big ass fucking bowl of ramen. Let's see if Wolfram uh, confirms this. Let's see if Wolfram can prove that these two are equal, because I think it can. Because I think I understand how basic algebra works. Ninth grade algebra? It doesn't understand your query. X. O. I. Uh, X, I, O. Oh, let's see. Let's see if uh, Wolfram Elf is smart enough. It says true. We did it. We did it, chat. They are the same. Woof. Okay. All right. So we're good here. So AX, 7 minus AX plus 9 is the same as 16 minus AX. And that's what we did. <sighs> Fuck you, John Burrock. <laughs> We're not the brightest bulbs in the box here. Now, uh, add doesn't care, uh, matter if it's uh, right-hand side or not. So we just have this. Um, uh, or res is equal to m plus this. I've never done these optimizations before, chat. So this is very hard math. Uh, we're going to just do this, and we're going to bias towards having the ref on the other side. Um, okay, this should collapse. So now this should work with uh, let t is isle.add t15. Yeah. Right? So that, these two... Either operation, we don't really care which operation, or more specifically, the previous one varies, uh, is what happens here. Um, this is just the same as uh, prev m plus m, and then adding that to the original reference, right? Okay. So this should handle basically any combination of subs and adds. Uh, where the, uh, oh, it won't once we get to this side. So this is only on ads. Oh, no, back to Wolfram. Okay. So if it's an ad, we do these things. Uh-oh, got the hiccups. What's up, dude? When do you want to eat? Soon? Oh, I sent whenever. Okay, sorry, fan. Let's do. Let's leave here at six thirty. All right. Um. So, how do we simplify these things? Uh, 
Um, I would love to tackle ads and subs at the same time. Um, I don't remember much from my degree. Who fucking does, dude? Uh, add sub. Dude, math is fucking hard, man. Because we need to also put this down below. To Wikipedia, I go. Hell yeah. Actual food time. Have fun above Seagull. Get some good food. Um, so basically, we want to simplify this code. Uh, obviously, we have relatively similar operations here. So we can turn this into a macro where we have an add and then the immediate. Um, which might be good enough for us. Uh, macro rules. Uh, chain. We'll say chain immediate. We'll say the uh, um, orig ref is an expert. We have the, so let's go grab this code quick. Loop. Oh, pop, 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 pop. Okay. So in this situation, we need the original register and we do refs first. Uh, orig ref is an expert. So this is the original register. Um, and then we have reg i, and then we have ref i as well, I think. No, just reg i is fine. So we have the register, which is an input. Um, okay, so... Uh, decrement usages of the input register. Uh, increment usages of the original register. And then we're going to replace it with a, an operation, which is this. And then we have a... Urge ref, comma, uh, new m. Uh... Outputs, expert, uh, and then we have new immediate here. Okay, so then what we can do is we can say, if we have an add with a sub, we want to chain an immediate here. Um, and I kind of want this math back. Okay. Chain immediate. Where the result, which is reg output. Um. Uh, we have an output register there, which is the original output from the instruction that we're replacing, reg o here. Um, and that's actually a refo. We'll just say refo here. Yeah, that's what we did anyways. Uh, then we have the original reference, which is an o ref. We have an o reg. Then we have a uh, immediate register um or uh an input register which is the uh that is the original this is the one that we want to decrement so it's the uh, reg i actually and then we have an operation that this simplifies to which it simplifies to an add and the add that it simplifies to is a um ba 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 ba
a sip of the wine. We're going to do immediate wrapping sub prev immediate. Okay, that's kind of ballpark what we want to do. And then this immediate has to be values dot push uh, dot unwrap. We actually don't want that to be an unwrap, but we're going to have to change that. Um, uh, this is a value M. I'm going to ask you for some help with my tech issues for my PC. Sorry, we're not support here. That's not something we can really do. I'm sorry. Um, now, the immediate here is actually on the left-hand side. The yellow ore highlighting can get fucked. You don't like it, dude? It's because we're searching for it. Um... Fuck. Uh, we don't have a way to express if we're left-hand side or right-hand side. How do I want to do that? Because this is actually a wrapping add of the two. And then this is technically a sub. And then we have to... Uh, Um, we add the two immediates, and then we want to subtract, but the sub has to be on the left-hand side this time. <sighs> How should we do this? Should we make, like, a chain M RHS and chain M LHS? Should we do a macro expansion? I think we got it, chat. Oh, we don't know which one is the M. Fuck! Okay. Uh, so chain M, uh, RHS, where the M's on the RHS, and this time it's on the LHS. And then this is the same sort of shit. Uh, we have an output reference. We have original register, and then we want to say we're going to do an add. Or you just add everything together. And it doesn't matter if it's RHS or LHS, but we're going to bias RHS. Um, this is the go-to stream for printer hacking. Hell yeah, it is. Uh, 83 push. Okay. Okay. Um, so now we have a macro. So if we have a subtract here, now this is the same thing, except we're no longer doing uh, an add here. We're doing a subtract. And how does this work? Previn plus M. And this is the same as this. So we want to do a sub of OREG uh, with an RHS wrapping add these two. Right? And then this one, same 
this is going to be a uh, plus. Uh, let's just simplify it here. This is the same as plus negative. Same as plus negative. Then we can get rid of these. This is how I like think better in math terms. I don't know why, but I'm better at this. Uh, so we want to... Uh, M minus M minus O reg is the correct transform here. So we want to... Um, this is a left-hand side immediate, and it is a sub of the previous immediate of the immediate. And then we, we emit a sub, we're subtracting the O-reg. And that should be correct, and then this is the add case. So we have a prev in plus O-reg. Uh, doesn't really matter which direction, and then we're subtracting an immediate from there. In which case, we want to do, uh, that is the same as this. Um, which then means we want to do a, um, this is prev m minus m plus o reg. And then this is an LHS immediate. And we sub these two, and then we do an add. Okay. There's no way in Rust to match two A ties uh, to use the same M. You can. We can do that. Um, it really depends on how we want to kind of structure this code, right? Um. That's oreg minus that. Previn uh, minus that. That. This. Previn. Uh, prev m minus the m. So this should handle all adds and subs LHS. So any combination of these should simplify. Yeah. Um. So that's adds. Adds change with subs. A uh, subs change with uh, subs and adds. And I think this is correct. I do think we can simplify this code and make it a better code structure. Uh, but we have to figure out how we want to do that. Um, how do you want to do that? Sub is the inside, sub is the inside, add is the inside, doesn't really matter, these are the same, add the immediates together and add that with the original register. These we want to add the two immediates together and subtract the O reg. Yep. And then this one we want to uh, subtract the immediates, or more specifically, M is RHS or LHS, Previm is RHS, and then we add them together. Then for subs, this, uh, we add those together on the RHS. These we add them together on the LH, or we uh, sub them on the LHS, and then we sub it. Use cur operator with OM. Then use O operator with the result of the OREG. Yeah, that's like kind of what I did at the higher level up here, where I kind of match those based on direction and stuff. Uh, I do need to know the RHS and LHS for these adds and subs. 
Um, I want to make sure we haven't fucked up any math yet. So Previm plus Oreg minus M, because th these are subs. So these are minus M's for all of these subs. That reduces correctly into this, which is the same as Prev M minus M add with Oreg. And this is the M is LHS, M is LHS, M is RHS. Uh, this is, cr uh, this is just the same as this. Doesn't matter if it's RHS or LHS, but we want to bias it that way. So then if we do this again, how do I reduce this code? Because the direction matters. Like, the add, the direction doesn't matter, and that's why I handle this one agnostically. Um, yeah, if we had an add, then it doesn't really matter, because we know we're adding these two things together. Uh, Previn minus M... I don't know how much I can simplify it from here, chat. Oh, and in this case, I can do RHS, I think. Just to buy, bias it more towards the RHS. Looks good, ship it. <laughs> um, yeah, and we'll say RHS. We want to use RHS as much as we can. Maybe you think in terms of signs which are multiplied by negative one if sub. Yeah, but I have to have like an expression evaluator, so I don't know. Okay, so now we can go here where it's all right, uh, whenever it's on either side, and now we invert this where it's now m plus this. Um. And M plus this is equivalent to res is equal to um, M minus prev M plus O reg, uh, which is the same as O reg plus that. All right. So you want to add the immediates and we want to add the regs. Correct. This is what we have M plus this. And then in this situation, it then becomes, oh, this is a wrapping sub. So m sub previm. Right? So then this is the same m plus this, which is identical to um, this is equal to res is equal to m plus prev m minus o reg. So this is an uh, LHS. Yep, this is an LHS immediate. And we add the two immediates together. And then we sub. Then this one, uh, the next one, is M plus this. In which case, it doesn't matter. RHS, just add everything together. Then we have subs. Uh, M minus this which is the same as m plus previm because we're doing a minus of a negative, so that's plus minus oreg. So we do a sub wrapping add these two. Uh, is this actually correct all the way through? Right, because this is the same. That's what we were doing before. Uh, and then here, m minus this is equal to... Um, M minus prev M in parens uh, plus oreg. So that one it differs, right? There has to be a unified way. I agree with that. Uh, M minus prev M plus oreg, right? Um. 
M minus Previn plus O reg. So this is now an add. And now I have to do an M and a Previn. Does some easy 6502? Hell yeah. Then here we flip this, M minus this, which is the same as uh, M minus Prev M minus uh, Oreg. So now we have a, a sub, uh, this is an M minus Prev M, and then we sub it at the end. Right? Previn plus Oreg is the same as M minus Previn minus Oreg. Is this correct, chat? I don't like this code, but I think it's now correct. Um. Let's make sure Wolfram agrees with all of these things. If Wolfram agrees, and we implement the last line correctly, so m minus previm, and then we sub, and then this is an LHS. That was actually a bug. LHS, uh, this is also an LHS immediate. Okay, this is an RHS. This is an LHS, this is an RHS. Uh, R, L, R, R, L, R. Okay. Okay, so let's... Uh, o reg will become O. Prev M will become P. M will become uh will become I. Oops. M will become I. Then I can equate these two uh in Wolfram. True. Sorry, chat, but I do need to verify that these are correct. I know it sucks. Um, I just want to make sure I didn't get any math wrong. True. Uh, this one, I guess I didn't say prev m. Oh, I can't do that first. That makes sense. Uh, and then oreg. There's probably a better way to, like, batch these operations, but... I guess I have 12 of these. That's true. Wolfram only handles these, like, single letter variables. I probably could do this in a better way. Um, let's just make sure. These have been verified, so this is add RHS immediate I minus P. This is P plus I on the LHS with a sub. This is P plus I with an O add RHS, doesn't really matter. Oreg, prev m, immediate. True. Okay, and then i plus p, and then o, R, uh, that's RHS. Same thing here. I know it's not fun, chat, but uh, this is kind of important that we don't fuck this up. These have to be equal here. Um, and then that's 
t minus i, and then sub o, that's true. We probably got these right, but we're, we're literally testing it thoroughly right now. Is equal to this. And then we should have an add with a RHS. That's an LHS. This is an RHS with a P minus I. That's true. Okay, we're halfway done. We're getting faster. We're getting faster, chat. I'm sorry, but I don't trust my math. I know you trust my math. Uh, I minus P, good. Okay, these have to be equal. Okay, those are equal. And then we have a subtraction where this is LHS I plus P. All right. This is basic algebra, but we also can't fuck this up. And that's why we're being very careful in testing this. Because even though this really isn't that hard of math, if we fuck this up, uh, we're going to have bugs that are going to be really hard to figure out. So, uh, okay, this one's correct. We have an RHS add, and we have an uh, LHS... Uh, okay, so add those two together and add at the end. Dupe and dupe. This one is correct. We have a sub LHS I plus P. Good. I know for the math people in chat, you probably think this is fine. I'm also not reading chat right now, sorry. Uh, add these and then LHS I minus P. Okay, and then we have a subtraction, LHS I minus P. Everything is correct. Everything is correct, chat. All right, so we should be able to simplify uh, subs and adds that chain. It's that easy. It's that easy, chat. So we should be able to do basically any combinations of subs and adds. Uh, as long as we uh, continuously have uh, constants. Right? So that will always collapse. This is really fucking cool. This is really cool. The compiler will technically optimize it to the more simpler form. Is this is a good case for document test. No, we don't need we don't need tests. Tests are fucking dumb. Um, twenty two, one use of twenty two, one use of twenty nine, and then that's it for usages. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try sixty nine minus nineteen plus nine plus fifteen minus thirty two. 32 minus that whole thing. 96 minus that whole thing. And then take this whole thing and add it with 9246. And is that the same as taking this plus 69? Yes, it is. Oh, you want 420? We can do it with 420. And then that plus 420, and it's the same. Maps. All right. Uh, yeah, I've never had an optimization pass like that. But this optimization pass, our optimization passes so far are, o are O N, which is pretty fucking good, chat. O N for these optimization passes, where N is number of instructions in the graph, and then it removes them as it uh, as it simplifies them, which is fucking crazy. Chat, can we get some claps? Any claps in chat? 
Hell yeah, that's what I like to see. All right, what else can we simplify then? So ads and subs are thoroughly done. Both directions, they're thoroughly done. <laughs> Milkshake, I get it. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, so ads and subs are complete. Then we have ands. Ands can be simplified. If. If one of the registers is a... Um... How do we want to do this? That's the passes. Uh, the actual optimization process can be worse if different passes feed into each other. Kind of. We continue, we do another optimization pass. Every time we have one optimization pass that removed anything, we continue passes. So here we go through all of the instructions, we perform all the optimization passes, and then if any of them did an optimization, then we will continue. And that's kind of what we have here. So what we need to do is ands. Um, what are the properties here? If your and is a subset, then you only need the subset. If you have an and with an immediate, it can be simplified to the and of both, right? I can just and both of the immediates together. So it's an and with seven followed by with an, an and with five is just the same as an and with five. Right? Right, chat? And that's for ands. Um, so ads and subs interact with each other. Ands can interact with ors as well. I guess some of our operations are associative. Uh, which is what we use. Maybe we, can, maybe we can do all of these with the same code. Yeah, so the problem is like ands and ors are not uh, co communicative, as I always say. Uh, basically, if you or something with ff and then you and it with five, uh, that's the same as oring it with five, right? But the ordering matters there. If you am something and then you or it, that's technically different. Um, I'm trying to think of all the different operations that have this. So the shifts don't interact. The shifts interact with each other. If you have uh, an or that's bit disjoint with a successive and you can just keep uh, the and right, yeah, I think so. Associ uh, associative is one that. Yeah, 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 yeah. If we don't mix them, yes. The problem is we need to figure out the operation that we apply to the um, to the immediate. So like, ads are the same as and with and. So like an add and add and an and with and can use the same code, but this has to be and then, right? If that makes sense. So we can say add or and dot dot. Um, and then down here, we can say add, uh, although they have to be matching. They have to, they have to both be, um, they have to match the, the variance. And that's where it's kind of tough. Hmm. And FF is better to uh, just straight remove. We already do that. And and with max, 
Uh, and, and with Max, uh, just passes through the original. Right, we already have that optimization, where if we do, uh, uh, let t equals isle.and t not zero, that's a separate pass. If we do this, uh, nothing happens, right? Because it knows that that is a nop. Um... So, all right, chat, we need a brainstorming session then. What are the operations that can stack? So, A and B and C is equal to, um, so we have, like, um, and with and, uh, is equal to and um, ims, right? Uh, so if we have two ands, and they both have immediates, we can just and the immediates together, right? So that's one that we can do. So if we do, uh, let t is isle dot and, uh, t and seven, and then we also have, like, a, a t and five, this should just become an and five instead of two separate ands. Right now it's gonna be two separate ands, so let's go and, uh, implement that quickly. Um, an and where we match the simp, and in this case, the simp is uh, an and in any direction, it doesn't matter. Uh, an and here, uh, this is just and these two together. Okay, so this will handle one of the directions, but not both. Uh, and then the non variance is not covered. So this is chain MRHS. You can do that with XORs as well, I agree. So we need to do this for both the left hand side and the right hand side variance. So here's the right hand side variance. Bam. And there we go. Um. Come on. Why is that wrong? If we have an immediate... Oh, uh, opt. Pass to push. Um... We want a better code template. I fucking agree. I strongly agree with that. So, if we have an and... And... Those two... Um, if we have a previous immediate... Oh! Uh, this is an and with an and. Same with down here. This is an and with an and. This should now chain. Nice! So... Actually, that's wrong. TN7 and TN5? Oh, that's actually fine. I thought this was a three. It is working. This should be a one now. Yes! Fuck yeah. Okay, so if we do all of this shit, and then we end with three, and then we end with five, it knows that that's equivalent to just ending with one. So we have 22, we do, we collapse everything here into this, we then have an output, we then end that with one, and then that's the output into ILR32. Will it disappear if you do two and five? Um, that should prop a zero. Yes! 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 That props a zero because it collapses those ands here 
into a zero, and then we have a specialized case here that if you're anding with zero, it resolves to zero. Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! Dude, is that not cool? <laughs> is that not fucking cool, chat? Chad is impressed. Kind of dope, right? Right? AX is zero. Fuck yeah! It even gets rid of the reg read. Dude, that's so fucking cool! Alright, what else do we need to implement then? Um, we also have ors. We have ors as well. Let's try this. Let's try or with seven and then or with five. That should just be an or with seven, but it's going to be an or of seven and an or of five because it doesn't understand that yet. Uh, so that's the same as these ands. Uh, if we have an or, if we're chaining two ors together... Um, then we get an or where we just or the result. Right? Same with down here. We can go here where we have and. And then this is the same or. Or with an or with an immediate is just or that shit all the way down. And that's just now an or with seven. Ah, uh, fuck me. Um, oh, it needs to be added to opt. Um, uh, does that need to be connected? Yes. There we go. So it knows that that's just an or with seven. Um, so ands and ors can chain... But I think this might pick up on it. No, it won't. XOR is probably the same, is it? It is, it is. Yeah, all of these are uh, have those properties. XOR with exclusive OR, with exclusive OR, and then this is an XOR. So we, basically, we can bubble those. Go down to here, where we have XOR. Um, okay, so then if we did XOR T with 9, and then we XOR with... Uh, actually, this should collapse to 0. Or, no, this doesn't. Um... Oh, it should, I think. Uh, we just need to add it here. Thank you, G33Geek. Um... Oh, it knows that that's a not. It knows that that's a not. And then if we do a 5, this should still have an XOR now. Yeah, an XOR of 12. Is that correct? Or with seven. XOR with nine. This is correct? Yeah. 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 Okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty fucking cool. Um... The one gets cancelled. It's 4 plus 8, yep. So then if I XOR... Well, if I XOR T with T, this just becomes 0 and it props everything. Yep. 
Um. Uh, if I and this with five. XR 12. What else can we chain? Let's do a, a shift left by five and a shift left by seven. Now this one, the ordering actually matters. Um... Twenty-two months. Holy shit, Dave FTW. Thank you so much for all the fucking support. I hope you're enjoying these fun, weird, crazy, exotic pro uh, projects that we're doing here. Okay, so now what we can do is there's Andor Zor. We can take the same code, and we can say that if this is a shift left, um, and this is only if the immediates are on the right side for both, right? Only if it's right-hand side immediates. So right-hand side immediate, and then this is in the right-hand side uh, switch of the original instruction. If and only if we're in this situation, then uh, these can be um, um, checked add. Uh, this is a shift left. Unwrap or uh, 1020, uh, we'll just say 255. Um, could you change a uh, shift left one and shift right one into an and potentially? Yeah, there's a there's like an infinite list of optimizations that we can kind of do, and we really have to figure out what we actually want to do here. I'll source word. Um, FN checked add self RHS self self uh, option self dot checked add RHS um uh add with uh, checks for overflow. Unwrap or uh, woe max. Um, shift left, and then this is a shift left. Shift left and shift right cannot be merged because uh, you're shifting in zeros. They can be com conjoined into like an and, uh, but they cannot be merged into a uh, like single shift. Uh, cause there's zero, uh, bits get truncated. That's the reason for that. Shift left, shift right. Uh, simp previm, this true variant. Uh, RHS, we got a shift. We add those two together. Holy shit, that works! Yeah, look at that, look at that! So now we have a shift left five and seven, which is the same as just a shift left to 12. Same with shift right. Uh, shift right, shift right, and shift right. So now we can do the same thing here. Uh, shift right by nine, shift right by 13, uh, shift right by one. So this will shift right by 10. What's the max shift amount? Uh, we just, if we overflow this, we just go to the max, and then that will actually get uh, handled. So check this out. If we do a shift right of one, uh, this is a 32-bit architecture. So let's just yank this and 32 uh, paste it. Actually, that's going to give me one too many. Um, check this out. If we do a shift right of T by one, this should collapse into a zero. Yes, it does. Yes, it does because it sees that this will end up turning into a shift right of 32. And then we have an optimization pass that says, if we're doing a shift right or a shift left of greater than or equal to the number of bits in this architecture width, then we know that it converges to a zero. Is that not fucking cool? 
Is that not fucking cool? Yeah. Um, so this one's gonna shift it by 31. Um, KU win is fucking cool. Oh, yep, is f uh, uh, yep, at stuff. There you go. There's your uh, lip vibration. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, uh, all right. So, that's fucking cool. Um, we can have something like A is X or B or C is equal to that. Uh, there are some more like that. Yeah. So, um, where are the people that downvote generics? Yeah. Um, hmm, what I want to do is, let's try this, this is not gonna work, let t equals isle dot and t with, uh, one, value specific ones are less important, yeah. This is basically enough. I want to have this and operation because this should know it's zero. It should know unconditionally this is zero, right? So um, what we can do is shift left and shift right of opposing. We can actually compute that mask and then turn it into an and. Uh, an and with a shift. Hmm, that's not a single instruction replacement. Because it should know that this is zero. Because this is either a zero or a one. And then this shifting ends up meaning only the top bit matters. And the top bit can only, uh, the top bit only can be zero, which means that this should reduce to zero. Um, but I think that requires um, emitting uh, an and with a shift. If the shifts are the same, yes. But if there is a, sh if, if like in this case where it's a 12 and a 31, this is an and with a mask and then a shift with like a, a value. You want to combine shift left and shift right and compute the and mask? I still need to do a shift, unfortunately. Right? I still need to shift the original symbolic value into the correct location. And right now I don't really have a good position I don't really have a good position to add two things together. Oh god, that ramen looks fucking fire, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Um basically, it's a decent optimization pass, but in this specific case, we can't really do it. Uh really only only because um we would have to insert an instruction, and instructions is borrowed mutably. Uh, and the cost of that is probably too high. I think we'll keep our eye on that optimization. I think this is fine for now. We basically collapse adds and subs together. We collapse ands and ors and zors and shift lefts and shift rights into their supersets. Um, shift arithmetics. Um, shift arithmetics, we can do this too, right? Right? We can do this for shift arithmetics. Um, because we're not chaining the different types of shifts, so so shift arithmetic is just fine in this case. So if I do, uh, let's, uh, t equals isle dot sar t1. Um, sar, sar, sar. Only if it's on the right side. If we do two shift arithmetic rights, that should just be a shift 
arithmetic right too. There is one optimization we can do with shift arithmetic rights. Um, and it's basically if we ever did a shift uh, a shift right on a value, then we know that it doesn't actually have to be a SAR. Um, so a shift right. Check this out. A shift right, uh, or a shift arithmetic right that also is sourced from a shift right can be converted into a shift right where we add them together. Right? If we're doing a shift arithmetic right and we're the or original instruction was a shift right. If and only if the immediate was greater than zero, which we, uh, it should be the case at this point of the optimization phase. Um, then if the previous immediate is greater than zero, then we know it's been shifted right, which we know that the top bit is set and this is whoa min. So if the previous immediate is greater than zero, then we actually know that we're shifting in zeros. Right? If you had something like shift left five, shift right four, shift left five, you could reduce that. Yes, you could. That's pretty hard, I think. Um... I think this is like roughly the level of optimization I want to get to before it becomes so expensive to perform the optimizations that it's not worth it. So is this correct? If the current instruction is a SAR and the previous instruction was a shift right of greater than one, then we know that it's identical to just a straight shift right. Right? That's true. Because the top bit has to be zero, at which point it becomes a shift right, which then means we can collapse it which means that this actually correctly becomes zero. Right? It knows that we're shifting by too much. If we go to here, this is still zero. And then this, if they total 32, uh, so it's still, uh, oops. Shift right. Um, we have 31. This is now a shift right by one. Yes, or by 31, yeah. It's a shift right by 31. And then shift arithmetic right. It doesn't even matter anymore if we do a uh, shift right or shift arithmetic right. But of course, that could the same thing could, could apply to an and. If we ever and with something where the top bit is not set, then we can also demote it. Uh, so we can say here, um, if we have an and, uh, and it doesn't matter where it came from, if there was an and, and it is, uh, um, um, if we have an and, and the previous immediate and, uh, woe, uh, woe dot carry. So if the previous instruction was an and, and we had a carry bit set, Uh, or more specifically, if the carry bit was not set, if the carry bit was not set and we had an and as the previous instruction, then we can demote a uh, shift arithmetic into a, uh, into a shift, right? So let's do this. Uh, let's T is aisle dot shift arithmetic, right? T by 10. Let T is aisle dot and T with, uh, not zero. Well, it knows that's a knob. OX7F12345. Oh, this is a 32-bit architecture right now. And then we'll go into word, uh, fn carry self bool uh, returns uh, true if the uh, top uh, bit is set. We can maybe go through a specialized binary optimizer later. Could cover arbitrarily complex cases. I think we can make it ON. I kind of agree with that. Um, uh, we could just say signed. 
Um, and then down here, we'll just say, uh, oh, that's not signed. Is, uh, sign bit. Okay, and then down here, we can say, uh, sign bit is equal to bool. We can say self shift by self. Um, actually, we can just say self as self signed is less than zero. That will tell us the sign bit. Uh, if the sign bit is not set in the immediate of the and that was passed into here, then we can collapse that. Um, okay, it knows that that is zero. It should know that this is zero. It does. Because an and with the sign bit not set collapses it into a shift right. Oh, actually, this is not that. Uh, it's not zero. It's not zero. Um, actually, in this case, it is, but it doesn't know that it is. Uh, the right-hand side is actually the current immediate. Basically, we're just demoting a shift arithmetic into a, a shift right. So in this case, we shift it to the right by one. Um, oh, the and goes away here? Really? That's not correct. Um, this is uh, ref o, reg o. Um, if there is an and. Then we can demote it to a shift right, but it needs to be from the same instruction. Oh, these aren't uh, ref i and reg i. There we go. Okay. Here we go. So we perform the and, and then we do an unsigned shift by one. Because at this point, we know it doesn't matter. So if we say all f's here, well, that and will get removed and we'll have a shift arithmetic right. But in this situation, we actually know that we can convert it into, uh, into a non-arithmetic shift, which then means we can chain it into a couple more things, right? Um, when is that ever going to be valid? It's really hard to say, to be honest. Um, it basically means that we know that this is just, uh, it's just the same. If we got rid of this and, it will stay as a SAR. But basically, if we know this, if we know that the sign bit cannot be set, then we know that we can demote it, and then that means we can combine it a little bit more aggressively and understand the zero propagation a little bit harder. Because here's a great example. If we do uh if we do a shift arithmetic right by 32. It actually cannot simplify this. This has to be a shift right by 32. It can't simplify that. But if we do an and with f, it knows that this is an unsigned shift, which then means that an unsigned shift of 32 collapses into zero, and then we can say that this actually is a zero, right? And that's why we wrote that. Um, it's a bit aggressive. <laughs> Like, is that actually going to matter? Not really. We really should make an arbitrary solver here, uh, but I'm actually pretty happy with where this is. Um, technically, ands don't collapse ors right now, which they should. Uh, we should be able to say, uh, let t equals il dot or t and 7. Um... It should know that that or doesn't matter, right? What's the what's the logic here? 
An and and an or can be collapsed quite a bit. Isn't it dinner time? Yeah, we'll be we'll be going to dinner any minute now. Um How do you combine an and and an or? Um Actually, can you? I don't think you can. Because this could this could potentially sit set bit 1, although that would get masked off. It would know that there's no reason to or it against the and. So this could this is identical to just anding it with 5. We can only do it for specific values, and I think that is if and only if the ORD value is a superset of the AND, right? So if the previous instruction was an OR... If the previous instruction was an OR, and it only is a superset of the bit set in the AND, then we can remove the OR entirely. Right? So in this case, this is the same as just doing AND5. Oh, it's not. This would have to turn into an OR5. So there's really no reduction here. Change the OR to a 5, and then omit the AND? But that's not correct either. I think, I don't think you can collapse it, because the AND has to exist. The, the closest this could simplify to would be OR5 and, uh... Isn't this constant 5? Yes. It is. In this case, it is. Um... How do we simplify that? Um, how does this work? If the OR is a superset of the bits in the AND, then it becomes the immediate of the AND. Right? Um, if all the bits in the AND are in the OR, it's constant. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so uh, if the current instruction is an AND, and the previous instruction is an OR, and um, what is this? If the previous immediate and the current immediate um, if or is immediate and and's immediate is equal to the and, it's constant, right? This? Right? Um... Reg I... Uh, there's one input. This? Is that correct? If the previous immediate and the immediate is equal to the immediate, then we can replace it with that immediate. Is A and B equals C safe in Rust? I think so. This is correct, right? We have an AND, we have a previous OR, so we have some known bits. If the previous immediate and the immediate of the AND is equal to the immediate of the AND... Um... Then we can simplify that. Alright, I'll wrap up in a minute. Um... Replace with an immediate there.
This is just M. Yeah, it technically doesn't matter, but yes, I agree. Thank you. Uh, and dot dot. And then this one also works down here as well, right? We can do it regardless of the ordering. The ordering doesn't matter. So in this case, we can now say seven or T and this should still work. Yep. And it just knows that. And this could be uh, uh, this, right? And it will still just be five. Saves an instruction, yeah. Okay. So, is there anything else that's like really, really, really basic here that we want to optimize out? Isn't that fucking cool? Um, of course, there are like really complex symbolic things that we can do more and more and more. If you have an and followed, uh, if you have an and followed by an or with the same thing, you can remove the and. Uh, same thing being subset bits. Yes. Yeah, so in this case, if I have an and, let t equals isle dot or t with seven, uh, this should collapse, but it won't. Uh, five or seven. Actually, that will collapse. Um, if we do this, I'm wrong. No, I think you're right. If, if, the, if the ors bits are a superset of the ands bits, like in this situation, right? Like, is this not just seven? If the ors bits are a superset of the and bits, if the or only sets bits which get removed by the and anyways, it only works if the and is covered by the or. Yes, exactly. The and has to be a superset of the or. Um, let's try that. Let's just do that. And then this is going to be the last optimization we write. And, and, then, and then I'm going to get food. Um, we have an and. We have an or. We're going to chain an and under the or. And then we're going to say, uh, what's the logic we want to apply here? Um, if we're looking at the and is the immediate... Um, if the previous m or immediate is equal to the current or's immediates, then it's just this, right? Replace with m and m. It's just that exact same logic, is it not? If oring them together gives us the immediate, is that right? I think this is correct. If universally oring them together always gives the same thing, no, it's not a constant, it's an or. Um, if we're doing an or, and the previous instruction was an and, we need to determine if it's covered. The and is removed, but the or is left. That's fine, that gets DCE'd. Um, oh, yeah, this is actually really hard. Um, no. Uh, this can be chained into a new instruction. Uh... Basically, if the and or the orbits is equal to the orbits, then it's, uh, is this, oh, fuck. I don't know if this is correct. I don't know if this is correct. Um, I know that M has to be a superset of prev M. Um... And that would be determined by saying if m and prevm um, is this correct? Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> 
I thought you were memeing on me. If you or the or and you and the and together. It's the same as covering everything. The other bits are guaranteed zero. Yeah, that's true. Um, and yeah, I think this is correct. Now, what we actually do? I thought you're memeing on me. Uh, <laughs> then we want to chain in RHS because we want to actually map the previous input. We basically want to cut out the AND by going to the AND's input, which is the original register. We're going to replace this with an OR, and then it's just going to be with the immediate, which has now basically cut out the original from the loop. And now 22 is ORed with 7, which goes into 24. That's not true. That's actually not true. Because the AND has cut off bits there. Right? If we AND with 5, the top bits are not set here. I actually don't know if this is sane. Uh, if you OR and it came from an AND... Oh, maybe I just can't do it like this, specifically. Well, at which point I'm just reducing the constant, but I'm not actually removing anything there, am I? I don't think this gets me anything. I don't think this gets me anything. It would maybe change the constant that I pass in, which arguably could maybe simplify the operation a little bit, but I still need to use the result of the AND because there are bits that have been cut off. You just need the OR bits to cover the AND. And then it's con I replace it with constant. Then it's a constant replacement instead. Because, like, this is correct, right? So if I and FF, and then I OR it, this should not chain, because it doesn't know. Yeah, because this could be different. But if it's covered, and I think we're handling that, if it's covered, this is fine. Right? This is fine, right? It is, a, it is an immediate replacement. Okay, and then if we go down to the OR down here, same thing. We can throw it down here, and now we can handle it uh, in either direction, uh, T. So this will not work because AND with 7 OR with 3 is not correct, but an AND with 1 and an OR with 7 is just the same as CONS 7. All right. Is this correct, chat? If prev, prev m or the m is equal to the bits in the is equal to the bits in the immediate, basically, if the and does not expand the bits that are uh, present, uh, then we can just replace it with the immediate. And this is true, right? I think this is good chat. Uh, I think this is good. <laughs> We're still ON optimization, which is really good. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's find someone to send y'all off to, unless someone can prove that this is incorrect, but this makes sense. Um, if the AND expands it, it's not correct, but if the uh, AND does not expand the operation, then it's just the same as the OR. Um, this is just universally correct, and this should work for uh, other holes. So if we did like uh, if we did like 80, and then we OR with hex 80, it should know that this is just the same as 80 hex, right? It just knows that that's 128. Uh, but if we OR that with 7f, it has to actually grab the it has to AND 80 and grab that top bit. Um, similarly, if we did OR with FF, it just knows that this is universally 255. Fuck yeah.
All right, we're going to find someone to send you all off to. I think uh, everything here has been sane. Hell yeah. See you around. Thanks, Geek Pirate, for just showing up. Get fucked. Um, let's find where we want to send everyone off to. Um, uh, Bald Engineer is an option. Last Miles looks like they're watching baseball or something. Um... I think we'll send you off to Bald Engineer again. Hell yeah, I hope you all had a good time. I'm going to get some food. I was happy with the progress today. See you all around tomorrow. Cheers.